<clears throat> hello, hello, what's up everybody? It is a great day for Azeroth. It is a fantastic day. I'm here with Stay Safe. I'm here with Tips Out. I'm here with our guest Krom. And we finally have a release date. We finally have a beta date for WoW Classic. So guys, claps in the chat. Good job. We did it. We we accepted the release date uh, and we accepted the beta. That's it was really hard work. Mm -hmm. So uh, so yeah, guys, if you haven't heard yet, of course, um, beta is coming out tomorrow. Beta is coming out tomorrow. It's going to be a closed beta. We'll talk about that a little bit today. Um, the actual release date is going to be at the end of the summer. So you got beta at the beginning of summer, release date at the end of the summer, uh, a little bit later than than a lot of us had had, uh, had hoped for. But um, but still, it's uh, it's it's still coming soon, and that's going to be coming August twenty seventh. So very very excited about that. Um, well, so what? I, okay, let's go ahead and start. Right. Well, hey, on, on top of that, it sounds like they're having three stress tests. Right, the one on May twenty oh, second, June nineteenth, and mm -hmm. June eighteenth. So while the beta is closed and will likely open up as time goes on, I would guess, and I don't know if they went into details on this, um, I would guess that the stress tests will be open for everyone. So who knows if you'll be level one or level 30 or whatever, right? But uh, well, we even don't if know. you don't- no, Nobody knows. We, we right? don't know, no yeah. one knows, right? Um, even if you don't get in the beta and who knows, like all you can do is fingers crossed, I guess. Mm -hmm. But uh, it sounds like everyone will be able to participate in at least three stress tests. Yeah, let's, let's, let's hope that would be really cool. Um, so yeah, uh, basically let's go ahead and like kind of like address, there was rumors and uh, stuff that like kind of leaked out somehow um, kind of beforehand, but basically what happened, uh, I guess this would have been like a week ago, um, Blizzard ended up having some sort of like, it's like a media creator summit, whatever, um, I guess that's what you would have called it, but they, and this is something that a lot of game companies do this, I know Riot does this with League of Legends, they'll, uh, they'll invite people out to like play test stuff beforehand, they'll invite people out to like play test stuff, uh, do some recordings, get some like direct feedback, talk to the people, interface with people, uh, and, and we got a chance to do that, Tip Stay Safe and I got a chance to do that, and, um, so yeah, that's basically, that's how we got the beta footage. And so we don't have access to the beta right now at home. It was all in-house. So uh, if you guys haven't checked out our YouTube channels, uh, you can check those out right there. Uh, check out our YouTube channels. We posted some videos today and uh, we're going to have a lot more coming whenever the beta comes out tomorrow. I'm sure we're, we're all going to be on top of that. So you guys should definitely do that. Check those out. Yeah. The, the way world's I look at first, it is... by the way, world's first beta footage. So very exciting. true. Uh -huh. That's true. Like uh, I was going to say, as far as like us being able to play the beta, actually the alpha down there as well, it's sort of akin to, you know, how when a movie comes out, they have like media do a private screening a week or so in advance so they can write the reviews and get articles written in advance and right. they can all drop it on the release date. That, it's, it's sort of similar to that. That's the way I look at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so that was really cool. That was a really good experience. Um, there were some things we saw. Uh, we got to see the progress of the game so far. Obviously the game is not done yet. Uh, one of the big details about the beta is that it's going to be, um, it's going to be up to level 30. So, so far at least, I mean, we don't know if they're going to extend it or anything like that. I would assume, I, I think it's, uh, I think it's a safe, uh, assumption that they probably will end up extending it and increasing level cap or something because the, uh, the, the in-house demo that we played or the in-house beta that we played for like seven hours, uh, it was level 40. So I would assume that they would allow you to do that for two reasons. One, uh, to kind of, I mean, they extended the beta, or sorry, they extended the demo after BlizzCon. I think there was a really good uh, reception of that. I think people are going to be very excited about the beta. Uh, but also, you need to be level 40 to test the 31 point talents. So, and, and that's that's the big thing about this beta. And this beta is very, very important in order to get good feedback, good testing. Um, and we know that Blizzard's looking at it, which uh, I, mean, we, I think we've all been kind of surprised by this so far, is that they've been really receptive to to feedback. <laughs> because just because a lot of us have been, uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of people who are jaded and stuff. But uh, so far, things have been looking pretty good for Classic. Um, yeah, do you guys have any thoughts? Do you guys want to say anything about the, uh, the event itself? I thought yeah. it was really fun. I thought it was really fun. Really cool to see everybody. Um, very, very well made. Like... It felt like a slice of BlizzCon. I said that in my video. Like it, it felt like. Do you guys remember like BlizzCon? All the different, basically areas. It felt like they actually yeah. like just took a slice of BlizzCon and put it there. There were there were so many ways they could have done it. They didn't need to go all out with like the RBG lighting and like <clears throat> flags everywhere and the alliance and the horde. Um, but it was really nice. It was really cool. 
-hmm. yeah they definitely tried to make it seem like it was a wow vibe or wow or warcraft atmosphere um i i just want to take a second to say you know like we were only able to go down there because over the last year, year and a half since the Classic WoW release in November 2017, uh, you guys have been supportive of SFON, you've been supportive of Tips Out, and you've been supportive of me. And so, like, it, because of that, we had the opportunity to go down and get footage and take photos and get screenshots and bring them back and share that experience with you guys. So, like, I just want to, like, say thank you guys very much because, you know, you guys put us in that position. So that's what it is. Yeah. Hearts in the shop, boys. Hearts in the shop. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been, uh, it's, it's been really, really good. So, um, yeah, I, I think that was very exciting. So there's, there's a few things, right? There's a few things that, that have come up so far. Um, one of which is layering, which they didn't touch on officially, but this is something that, that we heard about whenever we were talking to them. Uh, layering is their solution to sharding. Um, after BlizzCon, in case you guys haven't heard of the story already, after BlizzCon, of course, everybody remembers sharding was a big thing in the classic demo. People were freaking out about it. I streamed the classic beta at BlizzCon, and then I went up to Yithisins, who, who unfortunately is no longer at Blizzard, Sakar on Twitch, if you want to go give him a follow. But um, I went and, and I asked him, I was like, dude, like, what the crap is going on with sharding? And, <coughs> excuse me, uh, he basically said that sharding was like their, their current solution just for the sake of like, okay, we need this to work for the demo and they knew that sharding worked so they were like okay we're, we're just going to do this for now and then we're going to actively try and like find the best solution uh so so far so far they've come up with layering and i think it's still in development i don't think it's done all the way yet but um it's essentially how it works is if you take a lot of people saw preach made a video talking about the the concept of having like server clusters do you guys remember this uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so Preach made a video talking about the concept of server clusters, and he was like, you can make like a, and I'm just using examples here, like you make like a Illidan 1, Illidan 2, Illidan 3 or something on launch. And they all share a name database, right? Yeah, they share something, and then they merge together. So this is essentially like, it's it's actually very similar to that, except it's a little bit more robust, right? So it's a little bit more dynamic. Uh, yeah. What they're so saying, you, do you want to explain? Yeah, I was going to say, like, I think with yeah. layering, there are some pros and cons, and there are obviously some very, very real concerns. So for those of you that don't know what sharding is, um, have you ever been playing Retail WoW and maybe you cross a zone border and the people behind you that are in the previous zone that you were just leaving, so they dumb. they disappear and there are new players in front of you in the new zone. So if you go to Stormwind, for example, on Retail WoW and Battle for Azeroth and fly in and out of the gate, you'll see players reappearing and disappearing on both sides of the gate. On top of that, if let's say you're in Goldshire and there's just too many people, there, there's so many people there people will disappear and be put on a different shard. So it's to accommodate higher play, high player populations that are in a small area. And so it's very like small scale or region specific um, or hopping between different zones and retail WoW. And so what they've said with layering going into classic WoW is that rather than these like smaller shards that are region or zone specific, you'll have an entire shard that is essentially the size of an entire continent, right? So one continent is one shard or a layer and then you will have multiple layers of different players on the same continent. And so it'll it'll reduce the degree to which you see people disappearing and reappearing as you travel around the world and go from zone to zone. That's true in Classic WoW with this new layering system. Um, but the problem is that how you transition from layer to layer, you can mm -hmm. have someone invite you from your guild or a friends list. They'll invite you and then you'll be teleported or, or sharded into their layer if you weren't already previously on it. And so this means that if there's like a big let's say someone's going to come gank you you're leveling in stranglethorn veil and you have a friend who's on a different layer like for example you're on layer one and he's on layer two and you're getting ganked you say yo dude invite me to let to to layer two now this is one to, of the concerns is what you're to saying stop from dying this is one yeah. of the concerns yeah, yeah that's one of the big concerns now who knows they might have it where you can't transition layers if you're in combat or have recently been in combat which would cut that that down a lot but i mean that that seems like a pretty easy solution just put like a combat timer on it to prevent uh layer hopping yeah. My biggest concern is, and I know we've all talked about this in our on our own streams and on our own videos, is <clears throat> let's say, you know, Hor uh, Tips Out has a Horde guild and I have an Alliance guild and Tips Out is in Blackrock Mountain getting ready with his 40 mm -hmm. raiders to go raid Molten Core or whatever. And I, I say, okay, I want to go gank his guild. I'm going to take my 40 boys. We're going to go gank them. We're going to go fight him in Blackrock Mountain. We could very realistically with the sharding system or sorry, with the layering system just show up and we're on different layers and they can't see us and we can't see them. So that's a very big issue blizzard has said they're promising that layering will not be there come phase two i hope that's true um 
So uh, what do you guys think about that? So, Crom, do you want to go ahead and touch on this? Yeah, I just um, – because I know when they were originally talking about sharding, they said it wasn't going to go beyond the starting zone. Is there a reason why they decided to put layering throughout the entirety of the game instead of just the starting I, I'm sure it's a response to, like, um, huge player interest, right? Because the, the point of having it in the starting zones is with the expectation that by level 10 or 20 or 30, players will be dispersed and it won't be necessary, right? Mm, um, yeah. But they could just see there's going to be so many people that we need to expand it to level 40 or level 50 or level 60, right? Who knows? And de definitely, like, you might have, like, like fewer layers for the level 50 plus zones than for the level 10 zones. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cause there'll be fewer people there. I, I'm not sure, but that that's like what's on my mind as far as that goes. So I still feel it would be better if they would have just left it to the starting zones and then tested it, see how like, see how much of a strain there was on the zones outside and then see if they needed to implement it there. I feel like putting it in right away is just kind of goes against the whole point of it like stopping sharding. I don't know. It just feels cool. kind of off to me. So here's, here's the thing. Here's the problem with sharding the starting zones. And, and I did think, and, I, and I've, like I've said this before, like if, if they ended up going and just starting the sharding zones or <laughs> sharding the starting zones, then it, it would be a thing that's like, okay, if this goes and it works, whatever. But, um, uh, the problem with sharding the starting zones is that you essentially, you have bottlenecks, right? For example, mm -hmm. The first bottleneck, the tightest bottleneck, is level one, right? Whenever you create your character. Because if everybody logs in, creates their characters at the same time, everybody is at that starting point. Now, if you have sharding in the first zone, let's say you have sharding in Elwyn Forest, and then after that, there's no sharding. Um, you basically have a time to stretch out that bottleneck, and that time is well it's important because people are going to level the 10 faster people are going to level the 10 at different rates so you basically spread out the player base and then you can trickle people in right but there's still going to be a bottleneck there because people are still going to be shorted and this and that so there's going to be like people are still going to be able to get mob tags and whatnot and, and it's just like a natural thing obviously so it would come down to how fast a player levels on his own right yeah. or her own uh, excuse me. So yeah, so basically the uh, on their own. <clears throat> so basically you do that and you cause another bottleneck uh, after Ellen Forest. So um, that is one of the big issues. Now with layering, the concept of layering and a layer, I think a lot of people don't understand this. I think layering has its issues as well. But a layer is basically, this is what they said to us, um, it's going to be like the original vanilla WoW server cap is going to be a layer. And you log in, you're in that layer, and that way you don't have to worry about dynamic respawns. You don't have to worry about – they don't have to change any sort of weird things with like, okay, they have this spawn here, that spawn there. Everything can be just like vanilla, and then your layer is like the same size as a retail vanilla WoW server. So it's like you have this, and it's in here, but then you can also have more people on this server. So you could have, let's say, that 3,000 number. Right, 3,000 number, 3,000 number, 3,000 number. So you might have 9,000 people, 6,000 people, 12,000 people on a server. Uh, and then that way you can have that many people actually logging in and interacting with one another, at least like in, in uh, the different yeah. chat channels and whatnot. And then. So, I mean, at the end of the day, we'll still kind of have a shit show. Like, we'll still be a ton of people in a zone, anyways. Right, exactly. Because I mean, it's 2, still going to be 3,000 like people. 1,000 people in a zone is 1,000. Yeah, exactly. 1,000 yeah, like, people in a zone is 1,000 people in a zone. It just won't be 10,000 like Northdale or like the private server experience where it's. Right. And that's Impossible. the thing. It's like, it's yeah. like, do you want the private server experience or do you want the retail vanilla experience? Now, with that being said, layering does bring its own set of issues. Like Stay Safe talked about, like being able to go into another layer if you know that some, if you're like interacting with somebody that you know is in a different layer, that's going to be hard to kind of predict, like uh, account for. I think just like being like, okay, like we know that somebody else is in a different layer and he's ready to invite me. Okay, boom. Well, maybe not. Like you might be full on your layer and somebody can just log in yeah. and come to the same zone as you. It's, or they want you to go to the same zone. There are like quest monsters or high value like rare monsters as well. I'll use Hogger as an example, though this will unlikely mm -hmm. be the case for Hogger. Like, let's say I'm trying to go kill Hogger and Hogger's down on my layer, and I've got a buddy of mine who's, you know, near Hogger on his layer. I'm like, yo, dude, you, can you invite me to your layer and I'll go check if Hogger's up? Like, yeah. that's a very, not necessarily that's... for Hogger himself, but for other mobs, that's a very realistic scenario, I right? I think so too. I, I, think, I think that's another potential issue. Um, so yeah, I got a quick question though. Um, just to make sure I, I, I'm understanding this correctly, mm -hmm. wouldn't that be the same case with sharding as well? Though, it's, wouldn't it's that same, be, yeah, it sounds the same. That behavior that that was always going to happen with sharding, where you could shard off and find another hogger somewhere else. That that's my understanding. 
Well, I'm guessing what with this layering stuff, Blizzard probably looked at at sharding and said, okay, what are the big problems with sharding? Mm-hmm. Number one, not having very many people in an area because sharding in retail, you only have like 40 to 80 people in like a single area before people get phased off. The second problem is people phasing off as you're walking around through the world. It's very immersion breaking yeah, as you're so. walking through. Yeah. Elwin Forest, you, you, fa- you go into Goldshire, all of a sudden a whole different set of people are there or nobody's there. You know, you're walking around Iron Forge. This guy disappears. That guy disappears. This guy comes out of nowhere. That's probably the second biggest problem. And and it sounds like layering is a solution to those problems. Um, I guess I, I'm not quite sure that I understand w- what is the major kind of concern between sharding and layering. Um, l- like, what's the problems that layering well, introduces that sharding didn't have? Uh, basically, I think I think the big difference between layering and sharding is that layering is going to be large scale and, and sharding is small scale, right? So, like, because it's so much larger scale. Uh, it's not going to be as immersion, immersion breaking, which is a good thing. Um, now, the other issue is that it seems like you're going to be able to have more control over moving into a different layer and whatnot. And I think having, I mean, having that control yeah. is important because you want to group with somebody and you want to go in their layer, right? Obviously, but that control could also be bad. Um, yeah, like uh, I, I want to add on to that just real okay. quick. I think my big problem with layering seemingly is that you have more control over it than sharding. And you can more easily manipulate it to your own benefit, you know, with a monster respawn, like a rare monster, or let's say there's a black notice spawn and on your layer, the black notice is down and you say, yo, bro, invite me to your layer and I'll go see if the black lotus is back up or whatever resource, right? Chests, open world chests. You can hop from layer to layer potentially and uh, just farm world chests, right? So the way you can control it and manipulate it to your benefit um is is the primary concern Mm -hmm. other than that i think the i I think the large scale like like i said a layer is an essentially a continent sized shard right right and that's one of the pluses that it has over sharding like we see it in retail well but obviously there are these negative drawbacks as well attached to it yeah i i think so too um so it's like you you have you have the question, right? Like pe- people say like, okay, well, like what if they just had more servers, right? If they just have more servers, then you wouldn't even have to worry about layers, whatever. And you have more people spread out. There's a few problem with this. And this is one of those like 2019 problems is that there's going to be more than th- like, I mean, you look at private servers, right? There's, there's going to be more than 3000 people that are going to want to play on a server and, and be able to log in that server at any specific time. Right? Like that's, that's more, that's, that's less people that's in this stream right now. Um, that's one issue. A second issue, and, and I'm going to call on some like private server experience, I guess, uh, a little bit like history. But like you look at Zeth Core, right? Zeth Core. This is whenever Elysium launched. Elysium, which eventually became Lightbringer. Elysium launched. Ser- stability issues. There were too many people playing. Okay, we're going to launch a new server called Zeth Core. Zeth Core came out, and it was fine at first, right? There was people who transferred off, went to Zeth Core, and it was fine. It alleviated a lot of the stress on Elysium and all that, but inevitably and this is something that is going to happen with classic i I think with anything that's this hyped up you're going to have this big spike and then you're going to have the big dip and then it's going to level out um that day one is going to be absolutely insane like this this is actually a major major issue that and and i think it's like it's a big obstacle that they've got to figure out how to overcome because it's it's going to be a rough day like there's still going to be queue times this is this is going to be something that they uh that they're they're going to need to find a solution for right so I don't it, think there is. I just think it's a completely unavoidable situation when it comes well, down to the technical side of it. Like it's just you can never prepare for a server overload, no yeah. matter how much well, you they, put into it. They just there's here, just nothing. Well, here's but, like the reality of the problem, right? Um, as far well, as like on, let, let, let me finish. Let me finish my thought because I'll forget. I'll, I'll forget what. Yeah, I, sure. yeah so just just to finish real quick. So basically, the idea is is if you can have like essentially digital servers which is what the layers are. You have like these digital servers that are made dynamically as people fill up into a server, then you don't have to worry as much about uh, having to merge servers later on. Zeth Core, after a very short period of time, ended up dying off. And whenever Zeth Core died off, and if anybody has been a part of a server merge in retail vanilla or in, in retail WoW ever, you probably remember that it's kind of cool if you, oh, okay, you know, we're, we're like the refugees, whatever, going to the new server. But at the same time, you lose your community, like you, you lose your name, you lose your guild, you end up not knowing who people are. And, and at the end of the day, you, you eventually end up losing your community. Right. And, and that's something that's a really like the social aspect of vanilla. Wow. is supposed to be really, really strong. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to come up with a solution very similar to like the, the, like 
uh, like kind of like server clusters, whatever that like Preach actually proposed, except it's dynamic and you don't have to worry about merging. So that way you still have your community whenever inevitably some of the population dies down. I think that's the primary, uh, the primary thought behind putting in layers. But then again, there's there's all the other issues that it has too. There's there's the other like uh, places for like potential like exploitive behavior, right? Yeah. So anyway, sorry, Stacey, you can go now. Yeah, like I, I think that there are some things that they have to do to make layering as least intrusive as they possibly can. I think the first thing they have to do is put like a combat timer. So if, you, if you've if you been in combat within like 60 seconds or something, you can't hop layers. So if you're getting ganked or you're going to die to a mob, you pulled too much, you can't have your boy invite you to another layer mm -hmm. and just save your ass in that situation. I think like they also have to make it so, you know, if you're if you're in a high level zone, there's obviously at all points through time going to be fewer people pretty much in, you know, the burning steps than there are in Elwyn Forest. So I think like they need to make sort of the layers converge at higher level zones. Otherwise, you're going to end up with situations. Does that make sense? Otherwise, you're going to end up with situations right. where like, I can't see tips out skilled. And that is a very, very that's big really problem. Bad. Like that's that's really bad that's one of the biggest concerns and i think uh that's like one of the hardest problems to fix right now because i really think the combat timer thing is is a very easy fix uh to like the ganking issue that people have been talking about all day mm -hmm. but i was going to say <clears throat> excuse me the reality of like finding a solution to this problem is that they're never going to find an answer that is going to please everyone. Like there's going to be a demographic of regardless of which solution server merges or just insane login queues, no sharding, just 17 hour login queues or layering or more traditional types of sharding, whatever they choose to do, there'll be a demographic of people that are angry and don't agree with it. And so really they have to just try to choose the solution that will piss off the least amount of people, right? And it, it's from an outside point of view or maybe from an inside point of view, it's very hard to determine what that is. and. It might be this, it might be not, but I, I think that probably like if there are any Blizzard staff watching, like I think that within the next week, you should have a really big blue post and address a lot of the concerns with layering mm -hmm. and talk about like really talk about it. Because today they did not talk about it very much. Like we know that it's going to be there and we have some footage from interview from our interviews with them, but I think they should really deep dive into layering and talk about the ways it might complicate gameplay or ways you're going to minimize minimize the ways that it complicates gameplay. I think they really need to talk about it because it's like a very real and legitimate concern a lot of players have right now. Mm -hmm. I, I, I honestly think talking about it is a waste of time right now. I think the best thing is just to start testing it. I think that before you commit to any kind of system and even, you know, specify certain systems, just start testing it, man. Like we have these, these uh, stress test weekends, get as many people in there as possible. I know they scheduled, I think, three of those weekends. Schedule four, five, six. It's not like anybody's going to complain. These guys got nothing better to do on Friday and Saturday nights. We're all going to be there anyways. Let's get us all in there. We'll test layering. We'll test sharding. We'll test every kind of system we can test. And well, it'll be very, very obvious by the end of it which system is better than which. Well, and, and I think, yeah. So sorry. I thought you were done. You can continue. Well, yeah. Well, I, I mean, at, at the end of that, you know, release a blue post saying, okay, hey, guys, you know, we brought you guys out to this and this. We on this one we tested this way, mm -hmm. on that one we tested that way, and these were the <clears> results, <throat> and this is what it looked like you guys want. So this is what we're gonna do. Something right. like that. So I think that like to really test layering, you have to have a diverse level population base on a server, right? So you need like you have these layers that are overlapping. You know, how is this how is this going for the level 10 population? Because it's all the same layers. How is this going for the level 40 population? You know, like it's you have to test like all of these avenues at the same time. So it I think it's going to be hard to stress test that. I, I really do to see how it really impacts like a living server. Cause I said it could be there for weeks or at the latest it'll be gone by phase two. So yeah. how is layering going to impact launch week or launch day? How is layering going to impact month two or month three when people are trying to raid and gank each other and people are getting world buffs wait. and want to snipe each other's world buff stuff like that. You know, wait, 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 so, is layering. Wait, 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 wait. Maybe I think here's where I'm completely off. Isn't this supposed to only last like a week or two? Isn't that what they told us? Well, no, they said uh, so. Ian Ian Hesikosa said that ideally, uh, it wasn't going to last more than a month, but a hundred percent for sure, uh, they would want it gone by phase two because it wouldn't make sense because now you have world bosses and stuff coming in phase two, so it doesn't even work. Yeah. So yeah. this this is one of my. I wish we had asked them when we were down there. This, like, why are they confident that it won't be there when phase two starts? If it's if if it's if layering is there in phase two, that is a big problem. That cannot happen. Yeah, it doesn't but even why, work. 
why are they confident that they won't need it come phase two? Are they counting on some other tool they're they're working on to take over and, and replace layering? Are they counting on just super stark population drop off? Or I, I'm wondering why they are so confident because they, they expressed it many times. Why are they so confident that they won't need it um, after after four or five months, whenever phase two comes out, right? I'm not necessarily sure it's that they're confident. It's just that they probably recognize that having it in in phase two is a lot more detrimental to the game and to the image of the game than not having it. So they're probably like, yeah, just gonna... holy crap, phase two, we cannot have it because if there's two Kazakhs on a server, people are going to mean the shit out of this game. Well, um, it's, so yeah, That's it's just... probably why they're getting rid of it. Yeah, it, it just doesn't work. So uh, it, it literally just doesn't work in phase two. So, uh, you know, a, a few things to, to mention, you know, talking about the stress test and stuff. So this is what like, and this is what uh, I... I I don't remember when this happened, but like uh, specifically remember mentioning like whenever we got a chance to talk to to people at Blizzard to to devs, uh, bringing up the concept of st stress testing. Right? It's like okay, like whether you guys do a beta or stress testing or whatever, the best po uh, this is this is what I remember saying. If you guys do a stress test, then what I think would be a really good idea is if you have a stress test for whatever sharding that you have already whatever new system that you come up with, but then also a stress test for let the kids freaking play. Like just roll it out there, know nothing, see what happens. Like if you have no other system put in there with like, and now I, I said 5,000 people back then, I'm, I'm sure they would have to test it with like 10,000 people and just see what happens, right? Because I think there's a few things, I think there's a few things that comes out of this. One, Blizzard gets the the data they need, they get to see what they need to see. It's it's like a, on, a, on a large scale, right? To the community, the people playing the game get to see so that we can understand, oh, okay, this is how this is going to play out. This is how this looks. So that way, now that you have Blizzard sees it, the community sees it, and then the third thing is Blizzard also sees how the community reacts to it and what the community wants. Because um, at the end of the day, what people really want is people want to play Vanilla WoW like, as it was as much as possible, right? So uh, whatever they can do in order to get it as close to as possible to that point is I think the most important thing, right? And and I do think that layering is better than dynamic response. I do think layering is probably better than sharding, but here's something else to consider. Like nobody has really seen layering in action and we're not going to get to see layering in action until tomorrow for the first time. So nobody really knows how it's going to happen. Well, it depends on how many people they have in the beta, right? Like we, th there might not even be enough people in the beta to justify two layers. Right. I have no it's idea. True. Who it's knows? True. Yeah, because it certainly wasn't that way before, right? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Rob? What do you think? I I don't know. I I just I'm a little bitter towards the entire layering subject. It just seems it just I'm not sure it's like the right solution. I mean, I I get the I get the downfall with like the bottlenecking and stuff, but I just think like no matter I think no matter what they're going to be running into problems. I think even if they layer it, even no matter what shop we're, on, we're still going to be like struggling for mobs. Most of us are going to stick to our leveling tactics. We're going to push out. We're going to be out of the zone before everybody else. Hardcore mm -hmm. levelers always have the edge. Everyone else is going to experience it just like a regular MMO. You, it's, it's just it's just unavoidable. Even for MMOs that are brand new and just starting out, even their launches are just as chaotic. Mm -hmm. uh, layering outside of the starting zone, I think, even if you're worried about a bottleneck, is rough. I'd rather just deal with a bottleneck than all those issue, issues you guys are talking about. I mean, phase two, world bosses. Yeah, you could avoid that exploiting, but what about the mountain of exploiting prior to then? You know, I just see that being too much of a problem. Out, once you get Here's, outside of the starting zone, that's where you can make money. That's where the money is. That's where the goal is. This is what I was going to mention: is like Black Lotus on different layers and stuff, right? Yeah, like I mean, rough. I just use one, Imagine. right? Um, like Black Lotus or, or any sort of nodes or any sort of like resource that you're trying to look for if you're doing like Devil Sword farming or whatever, uh, trying to layer hop. Now I do, like I said, I do think it's going to be, it's it's not going to be super easy to layer hop, right? Because you have to be in contact with somebody. Hey, are you in a different layer? I don't know. Let me run all the way to you. Okay, I'm in a different layer. Okay, let me hop over to your layer. Now, somebody actually made a good point. I, I'm not super familiar with with uh, a lot of Korean MMOs and. Uh, I, I've heard that this is similar to what BDO does. I don't know how similar, but I have heard it's similar. Uh, mean Season was saying that they use something called channels, and this sounds very similar to that, and they don't work while in combat, and they have a one to two minute cooldown, uh, at least in, in most Eastern MMOs. So I don't know. And, and that's the thing. Nobody really knows. Nobody's seen it in action. And they didn't even announce this officially at, at the uh, event we were at. They just kind of talked to us about this whenever we, we brought it up, right? 
Uh, and it's something that's, this isn't even something that's completely done. I think it's in development. Like they're still working on trying to figure out the best way to implement it, but this is just kind of what they're leaning towards now. And that's just them being transparent, so, right? Let me ask this, because I've been streaming all day and like it's been a long day, have they in a blue post to charting or layering today? Or is all the information we have from the meeting that we had a week and a half ago? I'm pretty sure it's all from that meeting. Okay. Which is why I think people are very upset because we, we don't have like kind of a concrete, like, like we've explained it during our streams yeah but you know it's a difficult topic to explain it's very abstract and the way yeah. it was described to us was you know very you know very abstract so i uh, i really really think that within the next week they need to have a very long blue post like explaining exactly what it is because assuredly yeah. like they're going to be able to explain it more articulately than we can because yeah. like they know it better than we do and so i think they need to like over the next week like receive player feedback and just listen to concerns about it and address each of them. Yeah, I really think that that's what needs to happen. I'm, I mean, I got to be honest, every concern that I've heard so far is this as a concern in sharding, like hopping layers to, to get nodes. Well, yeah, that's what we were pissed off about sharding for. Like people exactly. are going to hop like hop shards. So uh, I'm, I'm curious if there's any new concerns specific to layering that sharding doesn't have or vice versa. Are, are we kind of united in the fact that layering seems to be a step up or at least half a step up from sharding? Like, uh, I, I, th I think it's a give and a take, right? Because obviously it's like, it's like one giant shards. There's less, there's less people just randomly disappearing and reappearing. But the problem, like I said earlier, I think is the control you have over it and the way that you could manipulate it to your yeah. benefit. Well, sharding is more like random and incidental. Um, where layering, you you really could coordinate it, right, and benefit a lot from it with it, monster respawns or nodes or chests or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, well, and here's another thing. Like, people keep saying, like, well, this is the same problem with sharding, and, like, why didn't you just go with sharding because sharding is just the starting stones. Layering fixes the problem of having to worry about respawn times of, uh, like, everything, right? Because there's no dynamic respawns. Right. If they don't come up with a dynamic response system, which even Nano, who worked on the Nostalrius team, his quality assurance for Nostalrius, says that dynamic response are not good. And, and he thinks that it would be a really bad idea for Blizzard to go with dynamic response. Um, you you still have the issue with having too many people being able to not do enough things, not be able to, to get enough mobs or whatever with sharding if it's only in the starting zones. So what they do with layering, if a layer is the original vanilla WoW server cap, like they said, they were like 3,000 people, then, which is plenty healthy, like there's like some private server meme where you see like 3,000 people online and say, oh, dead server, like is, is Elysium dying? Like I mean, that's, that's like, it's like this whole meme, right? But uh, it's, it's still 3,000 people. That was the original vanilla WoW server cap or around there. So the the idea of having these layers be that many people and then they don't have to adjust respawn times. They don't have to adjust any, anything else. And they can just like let the kids play. Um, from that aspect, it's better. Right. But uh, again, like, like I said, like, we, I mean, we, we've, are, we've said this already, but like, we don't know, nobody knows until we get to actually see it in action starting tomorrow. And uh, yeah, like and th and then that's the point that's where we really have if. to give our feedback. Yeah. That's a big that's if a big that's a big, if. we too. don't even right. know if we're able to test it tomorrow. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, the the best thing. I mean, the best thing for everybody to do is if. I mean, granted, say everybody gets access to beta, bless everybody. But if you know to test it out, I feel like, I mean, even if you're going to do layering, when I say starting zone too, let me clarify like what I mean by starting zone. There's like two phase starting zones for each class or each race, right? Like you have you have the the zone where you spawn in, and then outside of the wall, your secondary starting zone. So for like orcs, you're at you know. You, you spawn in and you go outside and then you have to go to Senjin village, right? And then you do the troll quest, move up to Razor Hill. And then after that, that's your starting zone. Then, then you choose, do I go to the Barrens? Do I, you know, do I go to another continent? So on and so forth. Mm -hmm. They should, I think they should just leave it for there. I mean, th cause that's going to be the biggest spots. Those starting zones are the biggest spots. And then everyone decides, I don't know very many undead that'll, that like that I play with that are like, Oh, I'm staying here. I'm not going to the Barrens. As soon as people hit level 10, most right. people will skip off and head to another continent for better XP, better quests to get with their friends who didn't want to roll a certain, you know, I feel like waiting at least till that and then seeing the spread it out. Like I think to start with those two, because if they, if they're, you know, well, I mean, obviously it, we can't do anything about that now, but I think while we're testing, if we're vocal enough about it, if we can see it's not a problem, I feel like that's a big enough area to fill. Cause that's one to, I want to say 20 almost. That's like a one to twenty mm -hmm. zone, yeah. just for those two zones together, if right. I remember correctly. And even more, at least. actually. Yeah, and like, 
so if Wait, we are, can, you, are, you, are you counting the barons as well? No, not the barons. No, just okay, before so, the barons. So, so from my understand, you have like Northshire Valley and then of Ellen Forest. So it's like yeah. one to five and then five to ten. And then you have like the Valley of tri Trials or whatever. And then you, that's like one to five. And then Duratar is like five to ten, right? Once you exit yeah. the walls. I don't know. Like, I'm trying to think. I'm really thinking through this as you're talking about it. Like, <laughs> one to ten, even for the slowest player, is like four, maybe five hours of gameplay at most. That doesn't last that long. And so I, I just don't know, like, if... I, I think you like if if we're gonna like follow your train of thought, like you might need to have you might need to have it in barons as well. Just like add on to your thought because like oh well, yeah, that's well that's what I mean. Like, test it. That's, you know that's what I mean? That's you don't end up having to push it back more and more. It's like okay, you have a one to ten. Yeah. Okay, well this isn't enough. Let's push it one to twenty, and then at what point where does exactly. it stop? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. but but I mean, at least if you're doing it step by step instead of just dumping it all out at once and like frustrating your entire community, at least testing it in increments to see what works best, and then finding a soft middle ground while we're in the middle of beta testing. You know, like if if we if we just let them just make a hard decision and stick with it, then they're gonna make a hard decision and stick with it on release, and they're gonna piss off more people. Mm -hmm. That's the last thing we want. So I think testing things in increments and then and pushing criticism, positive criticism, about it, and saying let's slow this down. We might not need it in the zone. If you guys are if we if you guys are testing on a server that has two thousand people and you guys can experience the rush and the burst of people, uh, you know, you'll you'll know better than anyone else. So. Mm -hmm. play it play it test it and see if it feels necessary in the barons or whatever zone you get to at that point it might not feel that way. just right. remove the whole damn system dude just fifty thousand <laughs> people on each server and attrition 50, will, will whittle out the week dude just yeah. just do that yeah and, and we we won't be able to play for two exactly. weeks exactly Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, that's and that's the thing like the, the reason why this even is a thing is because they're they're trying to find a way to like alleviate server load and and to make the game stable so that people can actually log in and play right that's if that if that wasn't a concern then like this wouldn't even be a thing right but you got to think about like okay what solutions can we come up to alleviate server load and get people actually in the game that won't and make a negative impact on the game or like we'll minimize the negative impact on the game um you know not and, and here's another thing like you got to consider like who you got to consider who you are, right? And it's also like, the, so we had this discussion, right? Where it was like, okay, well, you can do this, 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 and this. And like, if you know how to do this, this, and this, yeah, but how many people are going to do that? I do think that's a fair argument. I think it's a fair argument that is like, well, not everybody is going to know how to exploit certain behaviors and stuff to, to their benefit. Um, but I do think that just how everything is now and people talking about it and this and that, I think whenever people do figure something out, it's going to spread really, really fast. Uh, and that's the big issue. That's that's mm. the big issue, I think. Like, most of the people here are going to be the type of person that is going to be able to figure stuff out, right? Like, okay, how can I, 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 I AOE form a pack with a mage? Okay, good. Get to a different layer. Okay, everything's instantly respawned. Do that because there's something there too, right? Then, in terms of like, you know, we're talking about dynamic respawns, like people being able to meme up dynamic respawns and being able to kill mobs faster. You could technically kind of do the same thing with layering. Now, it'd be it'd be harder. It wouldn't be like automated. And you'd have to find somebody else who's in a different layer to help you do that. But it's still technically doable, right? So they just have to find a way to minimize that impact. Yeah. That's the thing. So. Um, At the end of the day, a solution has to be put into place. It's not going to make everybody happy. Either you merge servers and piss people off, you shard and you piss people off, or you layer and you piss people off. Yeah, they, they got to no, find a no solution. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's so hopefully, like, I mean, if, if you guys manage to get into the beta, like, if you're watching, if you guys manage to get into the beta, um, you, I mean, give feedback, give good feedback. Don't don't give like loud, spurgy, obnoxious feedback, because then they end up not listening to you. That's that's something that I think people have learned over the course of the last few years, is that if you have like good, calm, reasonable feedback, where you're like, okay, this is this doesn't work, and this is why, and you explain, then people are a lot more receptive to that, right? Um, <clears throat> so yeah, let's talk about it a little bit. And I know, um, so, so Crom, Crom wasn't there with us, but, uh, I, I do want to talk about like our beta experiences a little bit, um, like getting, getting a chance to play the beta for, for just a few hours, right. Getting to play test it. Um, but do, do you guys have anything that really sticks out to you? I, I, I'll go, I'll, I'll go a little bit later. Crom, if you have any questions about the beta specifically that you want to bring up, cause, cause you weren't there with us. Yeah, absolutely. I'll let you guys go for it. The biggest thing that stuck out to me was how smooth the entire gameplay experience was. 
Um, it was buttery smooth. The way your character moved, there was no hitches. There was no, you know, janky change of direction, stuff like that. Um, you know, it was just, it, it, it was classic, but at the same time, it felt like, I, I don't even know how to describe it. I mean, you're going to have to play it to see what I'm talking about. Um, mm. But the second thing that I noticed was the overall difficulty of the world itself. It seemed that mobs out in the world were doing more damage and taking less damage. Um, and, and stay safe. I know you had some very specific experiences with that, but th that's pretty much how I felt. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, like, I, I do a lot of leveling practice on private servers for, like, speed leveling and stuff like that. And so when I, when I sat down at the uh, beta about a week and a half ago, one thing I made sure I had time to do was level 1 to 10. And I, I, so I tried to compare my, my leveling time uh, on the beta to a private server leveling time 1 to 10. And I've, I noticed very early on some very obvious things. And so like a couple things I noticed, um, regen rates are two times slower in Classic WoW than they are in a private server, than they are in private servers. So you regenerate mana and HP way more slowly. So that slows things down a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Monsters are way more mobile. Monsters right. are way more mobile in Classic WoW. There's patrols all over the place. Monsters are just running all over the place. And you don't see that sort of monster movement on private servers. Um, you're right. Things are dying slowly. They're doing more damage. They're taking less damage. And that's just what it is. Like, mm -hmm. it, it's just going to be... Uh, it's just going to be a more difficult experience, absolutely, in classic yeah. while it is on private servers. Yeah, I, I think, uh, I mean, people people forget, right? I, I think the more you play on private servers, the the more you kind of forget. It's like, okay, I've been doing this more recently absolutely. and kind of get used to something. But uh, Stay Safe and I both did, uh, we, we both leveled from 1 to 10, and we noticed things. We, we actually, we noticed a number of things that felt different. I, I don't know, did, okay, so Stay Safe, did you notice, did you have more gold or more silver while you were leveling than you had normally? I think I did, and I and I can't figure out why. Like I, um, I'd really have to go and see. Like, did I just get lucky with drops or something? I didn't experience that. No. Okay, so maybe maybe I just got lucky with drops, and I, and I thought that was yeah. kind of interesting. Um, because I, I definitely didn't have as hard of a time leveling up my skills and stuff that I I remember having, like in terms of private server experience. Red Pryo. Um, yeah, Red Pryo. Hey, that's how it goes. But yeah, streamer loot. So so uh, yeah, maybe that's just what it was. Yeah, I've saved. Um, no, but uh. But yeah, that was that was one thing I noticed. I, I guess it must have just been luck. But uh, also, just like you said, I, I noticed the differences in like regen rates and the world just being very lively. People moving around more, the pats, uh, going into the um, like going into different caves and stuff. You'll notice it's just just stuff's placed out a little bit differently. Uh, so I actually I, I didn't have the same experience as you tips as far as like the game being super smooth. Playing Paladin, I noticed that I had certain spells like Judgment it wasn't ever hitting right whenever it hits. So normally, whenever you cast Judgment, how it works is you load up a seal, you use your Judgment, you you basically take the energy from that seal and like shoot it out from you and you, you, you drop the buff and you do damage to them or you put an effect on them. Whenever you do this, like whenever I was using Judgment to Command, it wasn't going Judge, boom, instant damage. It was always Judge and there was like a little bit of lag time and you could feel it. If you go watch my videos, you'll see it. And uh, if, I mean, assuming nothing has changed, nothing's been fixed, um... I felt the same thing uh, on the demo, and I'll show you. I'll show you guys tomorrow. So, or that's what I felt on the demo. And I'll show you guys tomorrow whenever we're doing the beta. But uh, that's something that I, I, it actually it really bugged me. I, I, it's actually something that I thought was really, really bad. So hopefully that's something that they're going to get fixed. I don't know why it's happening. Is it because they're doing something to? Uh, well, it's not travel time of spells. It's instant, right? It's it's a DD. So. Um, uh, I, I don't know if it's something because they're trying to like simulate like spell batching and stuff and it's just something that is basically bugged because it's not 100% fixed yet. Uh, I noticed the same thing with Repentance. I felt like Repentance was not applying immediately. So I, I don't know. Uh, that That's just in my experience playing a Paladin and some little things that I noticed. So if you guys get into the beta tomorrow, kind of watch for that. I think that was something that is uh, going to be very, very interesting. Um, as yeah, far I, as... I, Sorry, I was going to say... I think as people are leveling through the beta, you know, one to 30, if they expand it, you know, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, whoever, whatever they let us do, I think as we play through it, people are going to be realizing and remembering things that have been like long forgotten as far as vanilla web memories go. We're going to like, it definitely, there's going to be a ton of differences between private servers. I mean, like we, the two big things that pop out to me, and I'm sure you guys have some examples as well, um, compared to private servers. So crit, react, crit reactive procs are, not working the way they do on private servers, right? So we tested that as fun and I tips. I think you tested that as well. Um, mm -hmm. Also, quivers, uh, 
which like increase ranged weapon attack speed by 10% or 11% or whatever, depending on, depends on the quiver, are not scaling with wands as they do on some private servers. So, which is yeah. actually, uh, I, I, which is not good for me as a warlock, but <laughs> hey, that's what it is. Um, but yeah, oh, yeah. like, and, and tips, tips mentioned, I watched your video today, tips, uh, the fire rocks in uh tenaris how they on private servers they don't have the fireball ability it's interesting i watched your video and then i looked in the in a database the database listed the ability so it's interesting that a private server wouldn't have that but exactly. uh, those are there in classic wow so there's going to be a ton of mob abilities and just weird little things that people had no idea were wrong or never even thought of um mm -hmm. that we're going to like sort of rediscover because dude, vanilla wow ended a long time ago yep. 13 years ago right mm -hmm. there's just stuff even if you played even if you played a lot back then, there's just stuff that people forgotten. That's just, that's just how the human mind works, right? So it's gonna be a, it's gonna be like like relearning something. It's just gonna be really fun, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, whoever plays warrior, um, you know, rejoice because we get buffed in the classic beta. That's all I'm gonna say. But yeah. Wait, how so? Well, I mean, just things work that don't work on private servers. The overpower thing is huge, dude. Like, it happens all the time, whether you cleave, sweeping strikes, or whirlwind, a secondary or tertiary mob will dodge your attack, and on private servers, you can't tap target to overpower that mob. So essentially, it's just lost rage. Mm -hmm. um, whereas in Classic WoW, you can tap, and you can overpower every single time, and it's just, it's going to help a lot with cleave damage, because, um, right. you know... We needed some help there. You know what I mean? No, uh, you know, it's good. It's good. I also charge is better. They removed the internal cooldown on stance dancing. It's probably a bug, but hey, just in case it isn't, right? It's something to look forward to. So when you stance dance, you can literally stance dance without an internal cooldown. Um, just don't report it on, on the beta. It's okay, guys. Right. It's, it's wor working yeah. as intended, please. Yeah, I um yeah, I, I don't know. I'm I'm not I'm not quite familiar with that um myself, but uh but yeah, the one thing that there is, um, I, I guess a lot of people, I, I've already gotten this, where people will message me and say, wait, I have this video of this happening. I have this video of that happening. Look, it's not to say that this stuff didn't happen or like that, that uh, it, what what people are saying, for example, it's like, oh, look at this guy. He's like sitting and, and he's getting crit reactive procs and whatnot. That's not to say it didn't happen. Like, I, I specifically brought this up to Omar Gonzalez, and he said what they were looking at and what they found was that at one point in the game it did, but by the final version of the game, it had been changed. Uh, at least that was my understanding of what he said. Uh, I could be wrong on that. So people might see a video from, like, let's say, for example, uh, January 2006, and that's going to be different than a video from, uh, like, March 2005, which is going to be different than a video from... Uh, December 2006, right? Like, there, Vanilla WoW changed a lot. There was a lot of stuff. So, in 1.12, like, and that's that's what they're doing. They want to release the game as 1.12 of the base and then kind of go through and, and do all the content and stuff like that, and that's just kind of how they're going to do it. Um, uh, I, I kind of lost my train of thought there. I was let me, let me about... ask guys this. This is completely <laughs> off topic. I'll just sort of pick up here. Completely off the wall. Um, but this is one thing they said when we were down there. We have a discussion with a few of the classic devs. They said <clears throat> they're interested. What they plan on doing is when Phase 3 comes out, obviously the PvP system is introduced in Phase 2, and then Battlegrounds or Warsong Gold Channel Truck Valley are introduced in Phase 3. They're planning from the get-go to have cross-realm Battlegrounds. And I don't know about you guys, I would like to have at least one or two phases of no cross-realm Battlegrounds. So I'm talking like Phase 3 at least, or Phase 3 and Phase 4, of no cross from battlegrounds and then if you have to have them later uh add them later on but i want at least a couple of phases yeah i feel very I, strongly about that what do you yeah, guys think about that? i i don't like cross from battlegrounds um this is i i understand that it might eventually end up being a necessary evil i understand that it might eventually end up being that but i don't see that it would be an issue right off the bat right the I, the reason why they added cross realm battlegrounds in the first place they added them in the 1.12 patch yes it was vanilla it, it was added in vanilla the reason why it was added was because by the end of vanilla you had servers that a lot of people had quit like you'd have major faction imbalance and you'd have like high like high horde population low alliance population and then the horde was always waiting in queue forever because the alliance so few alliance were queuing that whenever they did queue they could get in right away but then the horde would have to wait like 45 minutes for queue just for example right i'm just i'm just throwing kind of some stuff out there 
the idea behind Crossroom Battlegrounds was they took something that was like horde heavy and something that was alliance heavy and they they match them together. They took two servers and they match them together, except they would take like a cluster of them, right? So let's take five high horde pop and five high alliance pop switch them around, mash them together, make the puzzles fit, and then that way everybody would have better queue times. Good solution for fixing queue times, but bad solution for, uh, or, or one of the negative impacts of that solution was that it basically hurt your, um, it basically hurt your server community a little bit because the rivalries that you have of playing against people on your server and seeing those names and stuff, like, you remember people. Like, I, I'm telling you, like, I remember, I remember names from whenever I played on Illidan Alliance. Like I remember Piccolo on the Horde side. I remember Z Extreme from the uh, from from the Horde side again. Like I remember these names. There was names that come to mind. There were Horde players, but I remember seeing them in Battlegrounds. And then eventually I transferred to Kelthazad at the end of Vanilla after the next patch, all that. Um, but yeah, oh that was you. Oh wow, that was all you guys. That's crazy. No, but um, whenever you have cross realm Battlegrounds, that's not to say that it completely kills this. Uh, but it hurts it pretty significantly. Now, what could be cool, right? What could be cool with cross run Battlegrounds, if it's added in later on eventually, is, okay, you have your own server thing for a long time, and then, like, at the end of Vanilla, if people are having problems, okay, let's try and fix this and throw in cross run Battlegrounds. And then, all of a sudden, you're seeing people who are big names on other servers, and it's like, oh, dude, I'm playing against so-and-so. I'm playing against that guy. That's kind of crazy. That's the one positive thing, but I don't think it's something that they should add in. Ideally, it's something they wouldn't need to add in at all, but uh, I definitely don't think it's something they should just go in go in with off the bat yeah i mean the thing with cross realm battle groups or uh, battlegrounds sorry not battle mm -hmm. groups, battlegrounds is that you're not only playing against people mm -hmm. that aren't from your server you will potentially have people on your own team that aren't from your server mm -hmm. and this is sort of like this first step towards you know like disposable player mentality that is just permeating retail wow where you queue you queue for literally anything and you're paired with someone and I, I, like, it's like Tinder, you know, you hang out for a little while and then you will li literally never see them again. Players are disposable. It doesn't matter what they think of you or what you think of them. You're less incentivized to communicate and work together because like, like you, you don't know their guild. They don't know your guild. You don't know them. They don't know you. It just doesn't matter. Like they're, they're, that sort of like social contract is not there because you know that your interaction is limited to 20 minutes or 25 mm -hmm. minutes. Right. So, yeah. so I, I, like I said, if it's necessary later on down the road, like if you have to add it, add it in later on. But at least at least phase three, like I'd like phase four as well. We have to see. But yeah, like I agree. Why? Why have it in at phase three? At, like at, at least give, at least it, give a it the chance. Yeah, yeah, exactly. At least give it the chance. Uh, I, I agree. Hopefully, hopefully they they uh, and also I think people hear cross realm and they they think of like running around cross realm on the in the world that's not what cross realm is in uh in vanilla wow cross realm is cross realm battlegrounds are what battle groups are again another reason that battle groups were implemented at the end of vanilla was in preparation for arena which you absolutely have to have battle groups for yep. so you know what actually to that note battle groups are likely something that they're going to have to add if they eventually want to have servers go to burning crusade but and hey, let that be a phase five or phase six thing, Yes, right? exactly. It should be something that comes later on. It shouldn't be something that comes right away. Or, I mean, they might not even progress the, the those servers to Burning Crusade. They might make a new set of servers. That's a whole, like, not even a can, a bucket of worms that, that we're not going to go into right now. But that comes with, like, all kinds of other obstacles that they're going to have to think about. So, yeah. So, battle groups and cross-run battlegrounds, that's that's what we're talking about. They're the same thing. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, me. I lost my thing here real quick. Um, <clears throat> what are you guys looking to? What are you guys looking to? Uh, what are you guys looking forward to in the beta? Personally, like, what are you guys gonna be doing? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> at, this, at this point, at this point, there's not one particular thing at all that I'm looking forward to. It's just playing. It's just yeah. playing. It's it's been the longest journey as a gamer ever. I haven't liked one game I've played really, and yeah. this is like the one game I want to play. And it's like right there. I can just touch it. I just want to touch yeah. it already. Mm -hmm. I get my grimy hands all over. Right, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I, I feel like in general, I feel the same way, Krom. I feel like in general, there's like gamers, you know, maybe today I'll play some Overwatch, then I'll play some Fortnite, then I'll play some whatever, I'll play some Dota. And then there's like, then there's like WoW gamers and all you do is just play WoW. And so for me, that's, that's what I was, you know, growing up, I was just a WoW gamer. I didn't mm -hmm. play Halo, I just played WoW. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I outside of private servers like vanilla people have been like homeless essentially right they they yeah. their, their yeah. game hasn't been there for them and so now it's finally coming back and literally just logging in and doing literally anything 
like is going to be amazing, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, the big thing with the beta, uh, sorry, go ahead, SV. Well, uh, you can go ahead, actually. I was just going to say, I think the big thing with the beta after we after we tested, you know, last week, um, just testing things, man, just testing every little thing. Like there's there's so many small things here and there that could go one way or the other. Um, one thing that I that I noticed during the beta was you could actually summon people to an instance inside an instance that were outside of the world. I'm pretty sure you couldn't do that back in vanilla. You might have been able to. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure you couldn't do that. And that has huge ramifications because all of a sudden people can just literally AFK and Orgrimmar while they're warlocks, you know, just some of them inside instances and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I will not enable that behavior. I, yeah. <laughs> I have to run. So do you. Yeah. Exactly. So it, oh, that, it's was, just, that was a um, bug actually we noticed. Speaking of which. Some yeah, of it was a bu- I, yeah. 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 I'm pretty sure it was a bug, but that's yeah. just an example of, of some of the many bugs. Um, yeah. Yeah. I want to you know, be able to wipe buffs like that needs to be a thing. I, <laughs> wiping world buffs is. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. yeah. So, so that's that's actually that is a bug that we noticed whenever we were doing the demo because we we just randomly tested it to see if it would work. I think Stay Safe uh, tried to summon me or somebody. Yeah, that's what it was. I want to go respec right because I uh, I tanked an SM uh, Prot Paladin Extraordinaire tanking SM Library. By the way, I did that on the uh, on the little. Uh, beta test that we had, so I, I did tank an SM library. We uh, were level forty, by the way. <laughs> we we're, were level forty, yeah. But basically, we um, <laughs> stay safe. I, I think it was stay safe who uh, I think or I think it was me that you you tried to summon, and I went back to respec, and then you summoned me actually inside the instance, and then uh, it worked, and we were like, okay, yeah, this isn't right. So that's just one of the things that they're gonna get fixed, and you're gonna notice a lot of stuff that's wrong. Like I, I'm telling you, you're gonna notice things that are wrong about this this beta. Oh. Okay, this is wrong. Scroll over it, F6, write a bug report, and what they're going to do is they're going to go look at the reference client. They have a reference client that it works. It is 1.12, retail vanilla WoW. Everything works the proper way. It's just that it's they can't distribute it because of problems like crashing. It's buggy. It's not basically... Uh, it's not it's not like, like a quality product or whatever. So that, that, that they tried to do that initially and it didn't work, but they can at least test everything on there and say, oh, okay, yeah, yeah this is wrong. Let's go back and fix it to make it work like it works on this client. So yeah. as, as far as like submitting bugs on the beta or what we think are bugs, this is the big problem, right? Because if you're playing private servers, okay, this is the way it worked on a private server. This is the way it's working currently on the demo or on the beta. Is this how it worked in vanilla? Let me Let me try to remember. Let me go back and try to find a video. You have like four, maybe like three or four conflicting things that are like, did, was it this or was it this or was it this? And so it's actually very hard to like, no, okay, this is a bug. I need to report this, right? A lot of bug reports are probably going to be guesses and then I'll have to take those and, and uh, you know, uh, put the, hold them up against the reference client that they have internally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so so it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be interesting. That's another thing. Like for me, like what I'm looking forward to, and, and this is how my channel started. Like I, I, I my channel started because basically, like there really wasn't like good like rep paladin guides and stuff like that, and I just randomly started making videos while I was like in between jobs, and then that's it. Kind of went from there. But uh, I'm I'm very like nitty gritty, and I like to test like how things work. I like to test different builds. I like to test different combos of things, and. Uh, that's what I'm excited for is I really, really like just want to get a list of things. Okay. I want to make sure I know exactly how this works, exactly how that works. And, uh, that's, that's probably what I'm looking forward to a lot. Also, like from a personal, like growth standpoint, um, I really want to work on like my leveling route. That's, that's one thing. And and I've talked about it before. Like I, I was not like, I, I've never played like as a speed leveler. Like I'm, I understand the end game. I understand the end game of, of vanilla. Wow. It's like, you know, I've, I've guild led, I've raid led, I've, um, I, I'm, I'm pretty good at playing a paladin, all that stuff, but, uh, my weakness, like uh, I, I can admit my weakness is probably my leveling. So, uh, I want to go and be able to get my leveling to a point where on launch, I'll be able to level quickly. And then I might make a second character and then level how I typically do, where I just kind of, uh, I kind of coast, I do dungeons, I PVP and, and all that stuff. So yeah, I'm very good at, I'm very good at auto attacking. Yes. So <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately with the beta though, you want to talk about the whole pay to or, or sub to be able to get into the beta thing um I yeah i i, I kind of thought that was weird at first my initial thought was that it was like okay well they um my initial thought was that okay well there's there's one one reason to do this is that they wouldn't want to have like dead accounts getting beta access if they were just like pushing beta access out but 
then they came out with the beta opt-in thing that you actually had to go and specifically click classic exactly. for. Exactly. So exactly. that's when, whenever I saw that, I was like, oh, uh, I think, I mean, a few people mentioned this to me, like Rick mentioned this to me uh, among, among some other people. Um, and I was like, oh yeah, like what the hell? So, uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm usually pretty, I, I'm pretty like objective about some stuff like this and it kind of just looked like a cash grab to me and I'm trying to think like, okay, what, what could be another reason? But it just kind of seemed kind of like a cash grab to me where it's like, Hey, and now uh, here's my personal opinion. Do not, I tweeted this out. Do not go and sub to WoW, hoping for a chance to get into the beta. Like, I mean, if you can do, that's your money. You can do what you want with your money. But realistically, like, that's probably not something you should be doing. And then turning around and getting upset about it and throwing a fit about it. Too late. Yeah. Okay, sorry guys. <laughs> no, but like, this is this is something that you need to be smart about. Like, okay, if that's something you want to do and you want to gamble like that, don't get pissed when you get burned, right? Because more than likely, like, it's it's not everybody is going to get into a closed beta. Of course, they're going to open it up and stuff later on, hopefully. Um, it's but, not a pre-order. It's not like you're pre-ordering. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a pre-order. It's it's something that like okay, like if you're already playing, then they they give it out like that. Uh, I don't know. That's how that's how I feel about it. Like, if people want to do that, great. Do what you want to do with your money. I'm I'm very like. That's just my general thought. You do what you want to do. I'll do what I want to do. But I personally would not recommend you doing that and then getting your hopes up and then because you're setting yourself up for failure, right? Exactly. So. You're paying for a dice roll, basically. You're yeah. paying for the privilege of rolling a dice. Yeah, yeah. And it's like a loot box almost. <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah. Dude. It's just, just battle for Azra. Yeah, except yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a loot box, except the box might be empty. <laughs> That's basically what it is. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I agree. Like I think we all feel the same way cash grab and like you know you need to let blizzard know if you're okay with something or not okay with something with your wallet right that's what they respond to so i i would recommend not doing this unless you just unless you literally just don't care about the money you know the beta will probably last two months if you try to have a sub for two months that you're other, like you know just to try to get a beta mm -hmm. it's 30 dollars if you just don't care about the money whatever but uh, personally if i wasn't you know in my position i would not do that i would not do it because like you said it's for a dice roll now um that's the bad part. The good part is that they are giving preference. It sounds like to older accounts. So if you have an account from 2005 or whatever, oh, they are once okay. you once you bypass that paywall, right? Which I wish wasn't there. It sounds like you get preference if you have an older account. I wish they would just get rid of the paywall. Is that, is or, that or, confirmed? Yes, yes, <coughs> it is. That was okay. in their post, yeah, they yeah. said that in their okay, blue okay. post. Yeah, I, so I, I, wish that, I wish that they would just get rid of the paywall dice roll. And just have it be like that. And I, I think that, I don't know if you guys noticed this, there's the World of Warcraft beta opt-in and then there's the classic World of Warcraft beta opt-in. I think that it's really smart. Separating them is really, really smart because this is like a really, really good way. Players opting in for the classic beta, that's a really good way for them to gauge how many people are interested in playing classic. Well, really good point. They can say, okay, over the course of this mm -hmm. week or this month, we've had X number of people opt in. So we're, you know, maybe that will impact their decision making with their servers or whatever, right? So that was a really smart move on their part. And I think that it's the right and noble move to give preference to older accounts. Get rid of the mm -hmm. paywall. Like uh, yeah. it's it's so obvious and transparent what it is. Like mm -hmm. you're you're counting on people's extreme desire to play classic WoW to make you a quick buck where otherwise, you know what I mean? Like I I, I would say get rid of that. Do I think that they will? No, but uh, yeah. I would say don't, don't, don't do it. Now, something else that I just thought of, um, like preference to older accounts and stuff is cool, but they realistically, they probably do want to mix, right? They realistically probably do want to mix of like newer accounts and older accounts because there's going to be all kinds of people playing the game. Now, if there's a higher percentage of older accounts, like people who, who, you know, I played WoW, you know, 12 years ago, 13 years ago, 14 years ago, 15 years ago, and I really want to play classic. I think it's cool to have a higher chance to get in. But they might want to have a mix of like newer accounts and stuff too. So I, I don't know if it's going to be like a straight up preference to where you have no chance if you're a newer account, like you started playing a couple years ago or something. Um, and also, yeah. I, I do, I will say this there is something to be said. There is something to be said uh, about people who are already subscribed and you're trying to kind of like reward the current player base, right? The people who've been like loyal to the game or whatever. Cause, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, that, that, that's just kind of being like reasonable, I guess, or being just kind of trying to think about it objectively. Cause I'll be well, honest. I mean, that's something no. that I wasn't right. Like I, 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 like I'm, I'm the first to say like, I, I wasn't like loyal to the game or whatever. Like wrath came out and I kind of lost it and I, and I didn't really play like very seriously for like 10 years. Uh, and then I, then I kind of picked it back up whenever I got back into the private so, server scene. As, so. as far as I know, no beta prior to this has required you to have a sub. I mean, I, I got into the Legion beta and the, uh, the wad beta and i wasn't currently subbed i also think that like 
I, I also think they should give preference to people who have been in previous betas and have submitted bug reports because I don't know how many people get into betas randomly. They log in and they mess around and they never actually submit a single bug report. So I think if people have a history of submitting bug reports, they should be given preference as well because like what after, we have to ask ourselves, what is the point of a beta? Mm -hmm. The point of a beta is to fix the game, right? right? And so like, it's, it's not about fun, really. It's about getting the game good to go to ship. And so I think people that, like, obviously people that have a track record of submitting reports, which will lead to the game being in its best and most mm -hmm. polished state, they should get in, um, regardless of how long your sub is. So uh, at, while I think that people with old accounts should, uh, you know, have preference, I think that people that uh, have, have that track record should also get preference as well. Mm -hmm. You know what's funny is, like, uh, you're talking about how the beta is, like, to fix the game. Um, but a lot of times people put out betas to like make it a hype thing. It's so funny because at least with the classic team, getting a chance to interact with those guys and hearing like their response, maybe it's the fact that you can just speak with them in person. They kind of just, they can, they can talk to us. But, uh, one of the, one of the things that they talked about specifically when, when we were talking about the beta, it's like, here, this is what one of their big concerns was. Do you want to put out, do you even want to put out a beta and it turns into a hype thing? And then there's so much hype that it ends up like hurting the actual release of the game and like all the hype is gone. So yeah. I, I would say that's probably why it's only one to 30 for now. And then maybe they're going to, I think they're probably going to extend it to 40 and maybe even beyond. I don't know. But, um, that's, I got something. I mean, yeah, go ahead. If, if, if we just want to like on the subject of hype, not even to derail, but like it's, it was just announced on Twitter, like both EU and NA are completely sold out of wow. Classic collective edition. They're, they're completely sold out of what? Sorry, my, my, my. Oh, oh, both in both in NA and AU. Wow, classic collectors editions are completely sold out. Really? So, uh, do we know how many there were? Because that that's like impressive or totally unimpressive. Yeah, so. I mean, I'm not I'm not sure I'm not sure how many there are. I just know. I mean, someone just in chat said they bought three. I know some people that bought two each. Like people are going nuts mm -hmm. on this stuff. So, I mean, I the way one. the hype is definitely there. Yeah. I, no, I, I don't know if it was a – I don't think it was a classic-specific thing. I think it was just like a 15-year anniversary thing because uh, whenever they talked about the rewards and stuff at that summit we were at, they were talking about like mounts and pets, and I was like, what? <laughs> I was confused because I, I didn't – but it, it was just like a general wow thing. So it's not it's not a classic-specific thing, but obviously it's like a bronze um, – it's, like it's like a bronze uh, like statue of Rag, and it's like actually pretty sick, so – um, well, Ragnaros was a cataclysm boss, so it's a cataclysm <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Rag was cata. New meme. Okay. Um, yeah, so so that's uh, – yeah, I, I think that's interesting. Uh, there's, there's a lot of people who are into like uh, collectibles like that, like IRL, IRL mount farmings and pets and stuff. So yeah, I think, I think that's cool. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about uh, – and, and here, guys – just so you guys know, we are going to go to Q and a here in a second. And if you guys have any questions of like, uh, maybe, maybe some, it's going to be hard, right? Oh, geez. I almost broke my method chair. Um, yeah. So it's going to be hard, right? Getting too specific about stuff because, you know, if you want to ask something specific about the beta, like you can, but r like really reasonably, like not everything super specific has been tested yet, but it might be good to, uh, if you guys want to ask a question anyway about something specific, feel free to do that anyway. Maybe, maybe we have. So if you guys do have questions, tweet it at us, tweet it at myself, SFan TV, Chrome Official, Stay Safe Warlock, Tips Out Baby, uh, hashtag Classic Cast. I'll go and I'll look through Twitter. I'll, I'll search for hashtag Classic Cast and uh, we'll do that. We'll take questions from Twitter first. That's generally what we do. And then we'll take some questions out of chat as well. Um, one thing that we noticed is that it, the game is going off the original mount system. And this is kind of like an inconsistency, right? The idea was is that, okay, they want to go off the original mount system because that's how the game was for the majority of the game. Um, there's an inconsistency, but it's different because it's not as much of a systems thing in terms of how it affects other players. It, it's, it's, it's like two different categories, right? Okay, if most of the game had the old mount system where you did like tiger training or horse training or whatever, right? And then and then you got your mounts and all that. So that's what they're going with. But then most of the game didn't have cross realm battlegrounds. Why is that the case? And and they're in two different categories, right? But it's just like an interesting inconsistency. Um, how do you guys feel about having the original uh, the original mount system in the game? So this wasn't recorded, but uh, when we were talking to them, I, I think you were there for the conversation, Esfand. It was after our video, our uh, interview. 
them. Mm -hmm. We were talking about the mounts, right, sort of casually, and they said, yeah, so we changed the mount system at the very end of Vanilla WoW to sort of, like, this was intentionally just to get mm -hmm. ready for TPC because they were adding flying mounts, which had two new ranks of flying, and that's, like, that's the reason they gave it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like, I, I think it's a, I think it's a very good clear move to have the original mount system i think it adds a lot to like the rpg element of mm -hmm. vanilla wow like if you want to ride a raptor you got to learn how to ride a raptor if you want to ride a tiger whatever you got to learn how to ride a tiger right so i think there's that to it um i think it adds like some more flair and i and i i actually i might be the biggest advocate for this i really 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 want phase one to have the original unarmored epic mounts i think that's such an easy win there's no reason not to do it just go ahead and do it like it it it, it it rewards players that are there from day one and are excelling from day one. It's a cool little flavor thing. Mm -hmm. Like one thing that like makes things cool is exclusivity and other people not having what you have, right? And so the people that are that are killing it early in Classic WoW, they get those mounts, mm -hmm. you know, for the next 18 months at the end of vanilla wow or, or at the end of classic wow you're gonna feel like a badass everywhere yeah. you go and that and that's sick right so it's such an easy win like i really really think that they should do that yeah i, yeah. I think the unarmored mounts are sick like i i loved having my white uh my white horse with the the epic mount like i i don't even like having the charger to be honest like i've i i yeah i i i think having the actual item in your bag like like the the physical item mount is better than the casted mounts and then there's like a few reasons for that and warlocks have the same thing right so i i like having that and i, and I probably will continue to use that because i don't want to get like counterspelled or something while i'm casting it i don't want to use mana and kick into my uh like 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 basically trigger like the five second um like the timer for like the five second rule right for spirit region, region. Right? yeah 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 um so yeah, there's there's like a number of reasons why it's technically better. Like, you know, if you want to use the charge, you can use the charge. But there's there's a number of reasons why using like an actual mount is better than the casted mount for a warlock or a paladin. Um <clears throat> Yeah. So wait, tips, you good? Yeah, yeah. Um it seems like there's two contradicting philosophies when it comes to the mount system. Okay. On one hand, they're using the old system when they actually specifically told us that all of their game systems will be even in their patch 112 state and all of their content systems will be rolled out progressively. So it's interesting to see that with the mount system, they chose the older version of the mount system for the, you know, the system side, but for the content, which is the mounts themselves, they decided to use the, the later version of the game. So I, I don't know if it was like a swip swap, it was an accident or something like that, but it just, even within their own design philosophy paradigm, it doesn't make sense that the unarmored mounts aren't in the game but the early version of the mount system is in the game. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Swip swap. Yeah, swip swap. Yeah, yeah, it could be perceived as a swip swap, indeed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so guys, this is what we're going to do. Uh, and, and again, if you haven't done this already, please go follow Chrome. Please go follow Tips Out Baby. Please go follow Stay Safe TV. Uh, also, follow this channel as well if you haven't already, if you want to. Uh, we're going to be very... Uh, we're going to be really focused on classic. Uh, we, we have been, we're going to continue to be very focused on classic going forward. Um, a lot of good times. So uh, I want to go ahead and take it to Q and a, uh, I want to go ahead and take it to Q and a, and I'm going to start with Twitter. That's what I'm looking at. That's why I'm looking at my phone. Um, this is an easy one. Let's go ahead and start with, uh, this is from Greenwald and he asks, will there be wall climbing in classic? So, oh. yeah. There's not going to be like the the there's like two types of wall jumping, right? There's like the the kind where um th there's there's one kind that's not going to be there and there's one kind that's more like wedging. I call it I call it wedging and, yeah. and actual wall climbing. Like wedging and wall climbing, right? Right. So and, wedging uh, is going to be there. So yeah, S1 and I both have videos of us wedging our way, you know, mm -hmm. there's the little tunnel like in this in the Stormwind Trade District where you can jump up and you can get underneath Stormwind. That's mm -hmm. wedging, you can do that. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know about you guys, um, when I was a kid, one of my favorite things to do in Vanilla WoW and TBC, I'm not sure about Wrath, I'm not sure when this ended, I think it was through Wrath as well, you could go to Goldshire, and you could literally, and also the Stormwind Gates, there are lots of places you could do this, you could just wall, you could straight up wall jump up certain walls, no wedging, just just a sheer a sheer wall, you could jump up the wall, certain wall in certain places. And so the pillar mm -hmm. on the left side of the Goldshire Inn, the Stormwind Gates, you could get up there just by... Sh just a straight sheer wall and uh that is not there i tested that that's not there but wedging is there so anywhere you could wedge and it's it's maybe for some people it's hard to know the difference or what what's what and in, in some some places you're trying to get through it might take both wedging and wall climbing to get there so but wedging is there wall climbing is not mm -hmm. 
just got to edge the wedge. All right. Um, so let's start with Krom for this question, actually. Uh, this question comes from Lucas, Lucas Legacy. Uh, do you feel that the release date is super far away? I feel like it should be released earlier. Krom, do you want to go ahead and start? Um, yeah, actually, it does feel really far away. I mean, I under, I mean, I don't know anything like on the technical side what they're going through. So like my judgment's purely just based off of my own impatience. But mm -hmm. I feel like summer's like long over in August. I was... <laughs> Kind of, kind of hoping to be because like for me like as a kid every year like summer started in may uh mm -hmm. i should i want it i want it right now <laughs> yeah i feel i feel like it's too far away but you know it's not up to me yeah i think uh for me personally it's kind of like well and this is what i said about the classic summer comments i said i think they were just saying something that sounds like fancy like it was like oh get ready for a classic summer like feel good like it's like okay like and technically it is right because this is going to be a summer where there's going to be testing there's going to be a lot of information like this is going to be a very like classic news heavy summer i think it's pretty clear already but um you have the beta coming out at the beginning of summer and the actual game coming out at the end of the summer for some of us that's not really a big deal uh, for other people, maybe some of the younger folk who are in school, uh, that's whenever like college classes start, a little bit after college classes start, that's a little bit after uh, like, you know, elementary school starts for, for those of you guys who watch my channel. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, that's that I do think that's kind of an issue. It is kind of late. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's that's just kind of my opinion on it. Tips. Stay safe. What do you guys think? I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan of release it when it's ready. Yeah, uh, the big, me too. the big, yeah, like the the big challenge with Classic WoW is unlike any other game that we've seen from Blizzard, it's not being created on Sony Merits. It's not being ported up from the 112 client. They took the BFA client and they're stripping it down. So that's going to come with a whole slew of unique problems and challenges and bugs that you're really going to have to manually test and just, you know, brute force it. Um, the, the way it was explained at BlizzCon is, you know, there are a few like standard, you know logic lines they can apply to kind of get most of the game working but the rest is just testing you know looking at something in the classic wow client then going back checking the their 112 reference client to make sure the two clients are consistent and doing that for every little tiny thing mm -hmm. so if it's going to be like that i'd rather them take their time um you know just you don't want to see a bunch of small mistakes and small inconsistencies in classic to get it maybe a month or two sooner I just I'd rather them really really take their time because classic comes back only once and then that's it. Yeah, I agree. You know, quality needs to come first. I think that probably when they gave us the release uh, timeline, like summer 2019, when we first heard that, they were probably like, okay, we are 100% confident we can have this out in summer. The exact month or date, it was still up in the air because they needed to do work. There's probably some alternate reality where they got stuff done faster and they were able to release it in late July or mid July, whatever. But like. This is when it's ready, so this is when it should arrive, right? It's it's very likely that this is this is as soon as it can come out because that's as soon as yeah. they're confident it'll, it will be ready. And <clears throat> hey, that's that's just what it should be. Like it yeah. should come out when it's ready. Yeah, I, well, it's like uh, we, we've talked about this like a thousand times before, but like it's like when do you want it to come out? And and I think we've all kind of echoed that sentiment. Like obviously, like if you're a streamer who's your focus is, and this is just like talking about it, like. If you have a vested interest in the game, I'm a streamer who my main game is WoW Classic and I'm finally going to get to play my game again. It's better if it comes out sooner. But you know what's better than it coming out sooner for me is it coming out later and it being better for everybody and the game being better. You know what I'm saying? So like just just have it come out when it's ready and, and not looking at it like so selfishly. And I know it sucks for some people because like, oh, I have school and stuff like that. And like I know, but like. It's it's better for everybody if it comes out as like as late as it needs to in order for the game to be done right, and that's just the truth, right? Uh, it's just bad timing. Yeah, it's just bad timing for college kids. So take a semester off. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. It's a bad idea. Um, <laughs> do it. College is a waste of time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, if you got kids, leave them with grandma. No. Uh, okay. So did you see the server setup? This is a good question from Mr. GM. So you guys should definitely check out Mr. GM. He's uh, he's about as good as it gets when it gets to like the the data mining stuff, uh, that whole scene. But uh, Mr. GM asked, did you see the server set up for the alpha beta you played? Like how many PvP or PvE servers? Uh, we have not seen any sort of like uh, numbers or anything like that for if they want to do PvP or PvE servers. Or I mean for, for how many they want to do for PvP, PvE servers. Uh, yeah. I, I think it's – was this uh, like confirmed? I, it's, I think it's very, very safe to assume that 
they're going to have region regional servers for like oceanic and, and everything else right um oh yeah I, yeah i, I think, think it's i think it's safe very safe to very safe to assume that even i don't think it came up specifically um now there's still the concept of like why is there no rp pvp on launch I think that that's something that they should still consider. I, I do think that's because when it comes to having different server types, it's like you might as well just allow all the server types anyway, right? Because w- th- was there RP PvP in vanilla? Like I did not play on RP PvP. I think they were. I think they came in later. Yes. I think it was one point eight. Like I, I don't see a good reason not to have them. Like you might as well just, just put it in from just the beginning. Add one. Just add one or add yeah, two. Yeah, add like, one or two. No reason not to. There will be people that will play there either intentionally or just incidentally, and they'll make, grow to like it. There's, yeah. There's no reason not to do it, I don't think. Yeah. So uh, I, I think they should add an RP PvP server as well. Because, I, I, yeah, I was, I was under the impression that they were added later on in Vanilla 2. Um, yeah, so that's 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 kind of how I feel about that. Uh, I did not see this. This is, this is the other part of the question that Mr. GM asked. Uh, I did not check this. I, I personally didn't check this, but stay safe. You might have. Uh, will the epic mount drops not have any training required with the choice of mount training? Um, so that's not something we were able to see. I don't think they're supposed to, though. I think they drop. Um, I also, oh, man, I oh, I misunderstood if, the question. But yeah, yeah, sorry, go ahead. I think that if you haven't trained epic mount riding, um, oh no, I'm sorry. Like here's he, how it works. I think he's talking about like if ZG Tiger drops or something. No, no, no. yeah. So let's use Baron Rivendera as an example because you can get this very early on in phase one. You pay for the training, which is not very much gold. It's like 20 gold or something, right? right. And if you don't ever buy an epic mount for a thousand gold, a hundred percent mount, and you go into Stratham Undead and you get Baron Rivendera's mount, you can use it without a specific training type. So you you essentially never have to pay the insane amount of gold for uh, an epic mount. It's it's a it's essentially a free hundred percent mount. I think that's how it's supposed to work. So you can bypass. No, there's no such thing as epic training or uh, or like there's no there's no artisan or journeyman training. There's only epic mounts and non epic mounts. Those are the expensive pieces. There's there's mechanos rider piloting and then cheap me- mechanos riders and expensive mechanos riders. So yeah, if you want to save a lot of gold. Just go get a death charger. Yeah, easy. Yeah, just go get a death charger. Yeah. It's only going to take you like a thousand runs. You'll be fine. So, so, yeah. No, I, uh, if you're one of the very lucky people to get that, that'd be good. So uh, let's see. Uh, I think this is a this is a good question. Um, this is from Nillery. Did you hear any info about how Anixia and Nefarian head world buffs will work? So i think they're going this is actually going to be something pretty big for like the speedrunning community there there's like a lot of little things that's going to change about speedruns like at the very high end that could i think it might significantly impact uh speedrun times like the in the private server community speedrunning is a pretty big deal so uh the meta might change quite a bit i don't know we'll see what happens but uh one of the things on private servers is that there's no downtime between world buffs. If somebody pops an Anixia head, you can pop another one right away. If somebody drops this, somebody drops that, you can you can keep doing it like in succession. Uh, whereas in retail vanilla, there's a uh, there, there's actually a timer after the Anixia head. I think it's like six hours, right? Uh, there's a six hour timer after the Anixia head is dropped that nobody else can can drop another Anixia head. So now not every raid is going to be able to go in uh is going to be able to go in with that so um yeah Six yeah, uh, yeah. If, if you have multiple good guilds on one server um they'll just they'll just coordinate their raids around however i think that's probably what I it's think, gonna have to be but then I somebody's gonna break hours or six hours or what but yeah um they'll either all raid at the same time or raid at very different times right mm-hmm yeah, I think I think I think that's what's probably going to end up happening is like you're going to have like okay everybody, uh, we're going to drop heads at this time and this time every day, and what I think might happen is somebody's going to end up breaking and then there's going to be drama and stuff around that because people are just going to yeah. oh I want to pop it now. I mean, there's already drama within guilds, right? Uh, there's already drama within guilds whenever you give somebody the Nixia head oh I wanted the item and then they popped it before a raid and it's just like dude like you got to be kidding me but yeah that's all in the can of worms. Yeah, there is there's a lot of like <laughs> there's a lot of griefing that will come with mm-hmm. whoever gets a Nixia head, right? Like you yeah. if you really want, you can go grief someone else really hard by popping it like a half hour before their raid or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Speaking of uh private server meta and speedrunning and stuff like that, we actually heard a very interesting revelation from Ian Hazakostas himself. Um Private server or boss and armor values in vanilla WoW were not standardized. 
And that's oh, yeah. something that's been debated on private servers for, for years and how much armor do bosses have and stuff like that. They weren't standardized and that's been confirmed by Ian. A boss like Gar, for example, has a lot more armor than a boss like, you know, Kelthus out or like a caster type boss or something like that. So I know there's private servers that use static, you know, boss armor values because they saw it in the bestiary, you know, back in 2008 or something like that. Um, that that's not going to be the case for classic and same goes for resistance values they are also not standardized and i believe the the example ian gave and correct me if i'm wrong guys i remember him saying this he said a boss could have 200 shadow resistance um, or it could have like negative 200 something resistance now i don't know if he was saying that as a figure of speech or he actually meant that bosses have negative resistance values which could change a lot yeah, um, I yeah. I don't remember actually. I think I think I'm gonna step away to go get a drink or something at this time. So th that is what he said. T to go into like uh, a little bit more detail, they also said that bosses like uh, from vanilla WoW and classic WoW as well have thematic armor values and thematic spell resistance values. So for example, that Gar was a specific one he used. You know, Gar, who is like a guy who's made out of rock, he's like a rock elemental. He'll have more armor than other bosses comparatively because he's just like a rock, right? Um, Kel'Thuzad, for example, who's like a caster type mob, he'll have less armor, but he might have higher, uh, shadow resistance and frost resistance because he's like a shadow slash frost caster kind of guy, right? So, and this, this is, uh, very likely true for all the other bosses as well. Um, this is going to be something like in Vanilla WoW, there was an add-on called Glock and you would have it and it would log like every shadow bolt that you cast at a boss if you're a warlock and it would, uh, it would keep tally of how many partial resists and total resists and no resist you had. And it would sort of um, determine the resistance of the boss based off huge data samples. And so there will very likely be another uh, add-on like that. I doubt that the classic team ever comes out and just announces all of the, all of the armor and spell resistance values, but there will likely be another uh, uh, add-on like that, that we can use to like get more precise examples. But yeah, like, uh, Spell resistances and uh, armor values on private servers are standardized. In fact, uh, all the bosses in Naxxramas, other than Kel'Thuzad, have 15 spell resistance on private servers, which is just level-based spell resistance. Um, things are totally wrong. What, what this means is that, uh, what this very likely means, you can't speak with total certainty, is that classic WoW PvE content and leveling content is going to be much harder than what we've seen on private servers. Mobs are going to, things are just going to die more slowly Mm -hmm. It's not just it's not just bosses that have spell and armor resistances um, or spell resistances and armor. It's every monster in the entire world. A level one wolf has armor. A level one wolf has spell resistances, very low, albeit, but everything has armor and spell resistances. So, you know, it, it's it's going to be fun. It, it, I think PVE, everything PVE will be much more difficult. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think... Um... Sorry, I got distracted by something real quick. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think uh, I think that's going to be very interesting to see. People are going to notice that pretty quickly. I think uh, we certainly did. Um, here's a this is a good question, and I think this is a, this is something that a lot of people are probably wondering, right? Everybody's like, "Oh, I'm going to take a week off work on Classic Launch," right? <clears throat> this question is from Merivingio. He says, if you have a solid week free, is it a realistic expectation to at least have a main ready for rating by the end of that week from launch? Let's put it at 12 hours a day, so 84 hours total. Uh, if you're playing 12 hours a day for one week, I think that uh, you will likely not be max level and 100% ready to raid. Uh, that's probably not going to happen. Now, if you do that for two weeks, possibly, but uh, it, it just kind of depends, right? And, and you got to like basically be doing everything right at that point. Um Stay safe. How do you feel about that? Uh, yeah, so like the average 1 to 60 level time slash played is like 12 or 13 days. Mm -hmm. um, the world record, Joanna's world record, um, you should all follow him on Twitch also, Joanna. His world record that he set back in actual Vanilla WoW, uh, not on private server, actual back in Vanilla WoW was 4 days and 20 hours. So you're probably going, if you're a decent player, you'll fall somewhere between like 5 days and, you know, 12 or 13 days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. getting getting that maxing 60 if you have let's say you have a nine day or an eight day one to 60 time doing that <laughs> within a week is obviously not possible you have to play 24 hours a day um on top of that you mentioned getting pre-raid bis and ready for a raid yeah very unlikely i i actually seriously doubt we'll see i might have to eat my words i seriously doubt that regnaros will die 
within seven days of launch. Yeah. I don't think that's. I don't think it's going to happen. Te technically possible. Technically it's possible, possible, but yeah, probably unlikely. If, if, if everyone on your roster has like a four day or five day, you know, one to sixty, and they all play twenty hours a day, and they like, if they're just robots, then yeah, maybe. But I, I just, I don't think it's going to happen. And remember the way that the, the the system is working at launch. There are no dynamic spawns in Classic WoW. Every mob, or basically every mob, has a five minute respawn timer. Name mobs have more. Certain mobs have more. But your standard mob has a five minute respawn timer. And if they do decide to go with this layering system, there's going to be two to three thousand people in your layer competing for the same mobs that you're competing for. Mm -hmm. Private servers typically do not do this. They implement full dynamic spawns to the point where the second a mob goes down, it instantaneously respawns right away. So you have people literally camping the same mob spawn over and over again to get out of the starting zones mm -hmm. and stuff like that. That's not going to be the case in Classic. And they were very, the developers were very, very, uh, uh, you know, they were harping on the fact that they want there to be some resistance. They want there to be some struggle because with struggle comes appreciation, intimacy, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the launch of Classic Castle WoW... <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, um, <laughs> The launch of Classic WoW is definitely going to be one of the hardest server launches that, you know, anybody in the private server scene has experienced, at least for the past four or five years, I would say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it's good. Um, this is a good question. It's from Leon Slum. Where do you guys see Classic WoW in one year, content-wise and player-base-wise? Um, so let's say one year after launch, right? Where do we see it? One year after launch... Uh, I think we're likely going to be getting ready for the AQ40 patch. We'll likely be getting ready for Phase yeah. 5 at that point. Uh, I think we'll yep. be farming Soldier Up and AQs on the horizon. Yeah, because after... Uh, in Retail Vanilla WoW, patch 1.9, which is uh, essentially Phase 5. Phase 5 is patch 1.9 and 1.10, like basically mixed together. Uh, that came out in January of 2006. The game released in November of 2004. So uh, you're essentially looking at... You know, you'll, you'll basically be right before that point if they're going with a similar timeline, uh, which I think is very likely. I think it's very likely that they base uh, their decisions and how they, they release content phases close to the original timeline. They did say it's not set in stone, and they didn't even want to talk about it, really, because they're like, yeah, they're going to kind of uh, go as they feel. They're going to release content as they feel it's the right time to release the content and just how exactly. the player base reacts to it. But I think that the player base is probably going to... Um, I think if they went with as close to the original timeline as possible, it's going to probably be the best thing for the player base. That's what I think. Um, how about you guys? You guys want to talk more about like player base wise? What, what do you guys think? So it's it's funny. Um, you know, this was during our interview that we had us on, uh, mm -hmm. on the video that channel. I watched that. Um, I, I asked him like, if servers die off, would you consider server merges? And what they said was, he said it's not going to die down, man. And he just like, he's like, it's not going to die down, dude. So that's confidence. I, I don't know. We'll have to see. I hope stuff doesn't die down. I don't think it'll die down now, on private servers is that, you know, around the time AQ comes out, that is when things start dying. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and it's not like it's a, it's like instantly dead server. Be a slight, maybe like 25% population decrease. And it's, you know, like, that's what it is. So I, I think, that being said, I think Classic WoW is going to grow, grow or or plateau for its entirety. I don't think we're going to have mass die-offs like outside the first week or two weeks. You're, you're obviously for the first two weeks going to have like vacation gamers or whatever. Hey, you're going to try it out. That's oh, not for me, and that's fine. Um, outside of that, the people that stick around, I think they're going to stick around. That's what I think. What do you, what do you guys think? Tips. Um, for the most part, I I would agree. There's actually a really interesting article written by. I can't remember what his name. It might have been Jason or John or something from IGN. Remember when we met him at the event? Yeah, that mm -hmm. guy from IGN. Yeah, yeah he was sitting so, next to us, right? Sitting next to us. Yeah, yeah, he sat next to he us. He did that. He did that at uh, some library with us, Joseph. He wrote a really, yeah. really interesting article from the perspective of somebody that was very much, you know, in the thought of, oh yeah, people want classic WoW for nostalgia, and that's mm -hmm. kind of where he came from. And after he came to this media summit and experienced vanilla. He kind of had like a whole revelation and he kind of saw the light and i and it's so funny yeah. i haven't read the article but sitting next to him and talking to him throughout that event he was like like he we were in the dungeon he was like oh this is so good like i i didn't know this game was so good i forgot it was so good oh so, hey I, yeah. I think a lot of people are gonna feel that way i think exactly. a lot of people are gonna 
have that same reaction. Yeah. A lot of people yeah. are going to see the light. Like yep. uh, so many people, man. Like Ooh. it's it's one thing to argue about it. Oh, 15 year old game. But when you're playing it, when you're in there, when you're having fun, like how much fun we had, dude, the entire auditorium at the media event. Yeah. Everyone was just like laughing and, and raging and yelling. And it was just like, it, it was, was just fun. Dude, you know what it felt like? It felt like whenever like you're back in middle school and it's like, y'all go to your friend's house for like Friday night or whatever. And it's like people really like, like land party. It felt like a land party. It was very, yeah. very yeah. funny. Yeah. yeah. The funniest thing, and this is totally off topic. Uh, so Chinglish and Towley and a couple of. The oh, lost Did you, I lost move? you. Stay safe. Lost you for a second. Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah. yeah. Yep. I hear you now. Chinglish and Tally were sitting across from us. Uh, their computers were facing us. So if we if we peered over our monitors, we could see their eyes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they were doing a dungeon. They were doing uh, Razor Fen something. And they pulled too much, and they were going to wipe. And I heard Chinglish. She's like, he was, he was playing a priest. He's like, oh, hey, boys, click the light well. I dropped the light well. <laughs> and it was just so funny. Yeah. Light wells are like such a meme. <laughs> Yeah. It was so bad. I just <laughs> was like cracking up when I heard that Dude, from across the room. I, I was sitting, I was sitting across from Chinglish, and I swear, like he kept like looking up over and like just making like snide comments at me. I, I felt like I was like, Tim the Tool Man, and it was an episode of Home Improvement. I was talking to Wilson, and he's just like looking. <laughs> up. <laughs> It was so funny, dude. I love Chinglish, man. Yeah, it was a, it was a good time. It was a really, really good time. That was a lot of fun, but um. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's just cool to like kind of get get to go in there and test everything. And like I've said this before, I played like w you know we played Vanilla WoW in 2017, right? We played it on a private server, you know, before the classic announcement came out. That's that's what we were doing. That's what I was doing. That's what I was streaming. And I I very 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 strongly feel this way. I had more fun playing Vanilla WoW in 2017 than I had playing it in 2004, 2005, and 2006. And it's because I'm older. I'm able to understand the game better. I have more time to invest into it. I, uh, I I'm a better gamer now. Like, in some ways, in other ways, I'm not. I'm a not. Gamer. I'm not. A gamer. <laughs> hey, the good thing is, the good thing is, as a rep paladin, my my reaction times don't need to be that fast. So that's a good thing. But uh, but yeah, like it's it's just one of those things where you forget how good the game was. I started playing back then as like, a, I was going to play for like a month. I wasn't even planning on hitting max level. I gave my character a stupid mustache and I was like, oh, okay, whatever, this will be funny. And then next thing you know, here I am. So yeah, like it's, it's going to be an incredible experience, man. There, there's some things that we're being nitpicky about. There's some things that, that we're not happy about uh, exactly. And we're trying to figure out more about, we're trying to learn more about talking about layering and some of the other stuff. But I uh, I'm really 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 excited for where where this is gonna take us, man. It's it's so unbelievably fun, and there's so many people who haven't gotten to experience it. There's people who haven't experienced it in years, and uh, just getting a chance to go back and just get back into Azeroth as it was pre Cataclysm is gonna be really really nice. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One last thing. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you that didn't catch it. Uh, I did an interview with John Hyde and um, Omar Gonzalez. John Hyde's the executive producer of World of Warcraft. Omar Gonzalez, obviously senior software engineer at Blizzard, working on Classic WoW. Um, at the very, very end of the interview, I asked a question about TBC and Wrath of the Lich King. Mm -hmm. And the response that I got, I honestly thought it was going to be a throwaway question. I thought they were just going to be like, oh, we're not thinking about that right now. And, you know, our eyes are on Classic. Uh, the response that I got, was literally sure yeah <laughs> why not yeah. why not why not and i was just like blown away dude i was blown away so i think what they're looking for from mm -hmm. us as a community all of us here you know the people that aren't watching right now yeah they want they want to see the community come as one united voice and ask for tbc and wrath but um and classic I think it's, well, battle for azeroth yeah <laughs> classic, classic battle for remember 8.0 yeah, that yeah. was a good game. <laughs> oh, it was so good it was well so good. Uh, yeah. here's, here's the thing it's like they're and this is just how business works they're going to want you to ask uh and give feedback with your wallet so that's that's probably how they're going to look at it right like they're going to see it as like look if people are playing wow classic if it's financially like feasible for them then yeah they're, they're pretty much it's, it's very very likely that they're going to be doing like a burning crusade and wrath so yeah yeah, mm -hmm. definitely the biggest surprise of the night for me. I, I did not expect them to say they were up for it I, this I, early. I actually, uh, maybe to say it, it was a little bit surprising, but I, I'm, I'm really, I, I wouldn't have been surprised at all to, to hear like, because I mean, it, their business and you know they, they know that if Classic does really well, I think it would only make sense to go into Burning Crusade. So uh, it's, it's good to hear. That's for sure. Um, let's see. 
Uh, oh, guys, uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to look around my, uh, I think I actually, I think they were dirty. Uh, so I wish I could show it real quick. Uh, I might have to go check the laundry. But um, can would you, would you mind, uh, while, while I go AFK, just real quick, uh, I'm going to do another another question. Um, mm -mm -mm. Uh, oh, this is a good one. Okay. Do you think that we'll see the ability to bring 40 people into all instances we did in, in 1.0, or 1.1 1, 1 uh, on Classic Launch? That could very well make for a very quick first week rag kill possible. There's a lot more tech, too. So... Uh, because it's based off of 1.12, it's going to have like the 1.12 uh, dungeon caps. The instant is, caps, yeah. yeah. Um, this yeah, is and sorry. Uh, in addition to that, I think we'll see 10 man uh, upper black rock spire and lower black rock spire as opposed to 15 man. You know what? Whatever there was, it was like 10 man strathom and stuff. That's going to be five man. Um, I, I think it'll be all that's going to be. It's 1.12 state. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is from Dynamic Electivire. How are add-ons going to work? Uh, I I'm under the impression that it's going to be based off of seven three five. So the the API for the game is going to be seven three five. The last patch of Legion because that's what they're taking as the base game and they're stripping it down into vanilla. So actually they updated. It. It's no they, longer seven three five. It's it's BFA. It client. is BFA it's client. Eight. Okay, yeah, so yeah. so it's eight point two. Okay. Oh wait 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 wait. So does that also mean that there's no thirty two bit client? That's what that would mean. I'm actually surprised by that. So if if they're going with a BFA client, that means there's no 32-bit client. Uh, I thought that there would probably be a 32-bit client as well. Um, okay, I thought that. Yeah, I, I I thought they were going 735 for that reason specifically. But yeah, um, <clears throat> no Windows XP support. There you go. It's over. Game over. Um, Did you guys get a chance if, if, to duel? Have... What's I'm up? sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was just asking if you guys had a chance to like duel or test any of the spell mm -hmm. matching stuff out. Oh. Yeah, S1, if you've got to go, uh, I, I can hear you. Yeah, 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 if you want to do some okay. Q&A stuff, I'll be right back real quick. Yeah, see. yeah, yeah. So actually, S1 and I tested a couple of things in duels. We didn't have, like, serious duels because I still have PTSD from the demo. Uh, <laughs> Red Valley fights. But uh, I was like, hey, S1, go easy on me and test some stuff. So we tested uh, crit reactive procs, and those were not working, right? So uh, that's, like, a Pally thing you wanted to test. I also mm -hmm. tested my 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 quiver wand thing, and you know, much to my dismay, it, it, it this works on private servers. I mentioned this a little while ago, but uh, quivers are not scaling with wand attack speed. So I, I I'm going to be totally honest. I thought they would. Like I thought they would because your wand is a ranged weapon. It's in your ranged weapon slot. Um, I actually thought it would work, and they don't. Mm -hmm. I, I I'm actually surprised. I thought it was going to be like a weird, interesting meme quirk of of vanilla WoW, and uh, it didn't work. But uh, tips? Did you did you get to duel at all? Um, I did duel. I actually uh, I I killed S fan a couple of times. In oh, Gubashi we had we had the Gorbachev Arena. That's right. That's right. right. Claiming the territory. Um, and no, there was spell batching. There was like I intimidating yeah. shouted somebody who uh, who frost or not uh, frost over to me. I think maybe it was S fan that hodged me as I intimidating shouted him. I just remember something happened. I was like, oh, there it is. Um. But yeah, th there was it was working. Now the one thing that I noticed, um, there was a little bit of a wider window gap when when it happens. So like, a spell batching works is you cast a spell, somebody else casts a spell within like a 0 0.2 second window or something like that, and both of the spells are registered as being cast at the same time. Yeah, um, it feels like that window 0 0.2 seconds, whatever. It feels like it's a little bit bigger on classic WoW th than it is on. You know, NOS core private servers. I could be wrong. Could have just been like you know one of those things in the moment. It, it felt like it was a little bit longer, but but who knows? Yeah. Um, so that's not something I tested. So I I'll just have to take your word on it. I yeah. I didn't personally experience that. Um, duels. I'll tell you. And I'm, we're not going to talk dates or anything. Tips out is going to do a dual tournament on the on the beta. S right. going to do a dual tournament, and I will be doing a dual tournament. And mm -hmm. probably at the end, we'll likely do a classic cast dual yeah. tournament going to be a lot of dueling on the beta so that's something yeah. to look forward to yeah. big scheduled events hype um it's going to be a lot of fun those were huge on the demo mm -hmm. uh you know both tips and i had really big dual tournaments mm -hmm. and s1 i think is going to have the first one going into uh the beta it's going to be a lot of fun mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot of fun 
So I hope, I hope that early on, my concern of the dual tournaments on the beta is that we don't have enough people in the beta to fill the bracket. <laughs> oh, yeah. and, so, and so I, I hope that uh, they open up the beta relatively soon to more people and get more people in so we can uh, have them fight each other for our entertainment. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, you know what else is going to be a lot of fun? And I, I wore this on stream the other day. That's why it was in the laundry. And it's wet. Actually, I'm wearing a I'm wearing a wet T-shirt. So yeah, here you go. I know you guys have been waiting for this forever. So yes, wet T-shirt, S man. Here it is. I know. Ooh. Yeah, it was not in laundry yet. But guys, uh, classic cast shirts are are here. Look at this. Boom. This is the uh, the classic cast shirt. Uh, you can get this. This is going to be something that people have been asking for for a long time. <laughs> And uh, I have been lazy about it and not been doing merch for Classic Cast, but we're finally doing it. So, so uh, there's there's white, there's black, there's gray, there's red, and there's blue. So you got all your colors, you got your neutrals. Uh, yeah, so the, the I'll post the link in the chat right now. Uh, it's it's actually through Streamlabs. So can we can we buy your used shirts? Like if you break them in a little bit. My I if you want, I can order the shirts first, and then it's it's a very simple fee. Yeah, it's only an extra three hundred dollars. Yeah, it's only a six extra three hundred dollars uh, okay. for shirts. Yeah, uh, that I wear. Uh, I will actually sweat in them, and uh, yeah, I won't wash them before I send them to you. So I, I think that would be really really valuable and a good idea. <laughs> it's uh, so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. so yeah, no, those are, uh, yeah, I posted that link in chat right now. Uh, what we should do is we should probably post that link on, on our bios down below uh, on our channels yeah. and we'll get that situated. So it's, it, we're, we're, this, here's what happened. I I set up the shirts and I wanted to order some for myself. Quality control, they're, they're Bella canvas shirts, so they're nice quality. Uh, make sure they were good and then announce them. But technically that, that, that has been like secretly up there for like two or three weeks now. Um, but yeah, so there's that. People want classic ass shirts. That's going to be there. Um, do you guys have anything else for today? There was um, one question, and it's sort of been like in the back of my brain. Um, and I'm sure we'll all feel differently on this. I don't know. The chat might feel different. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll just have to see. So someone said, do you really think that they are going to follow through and get rid of layering by phase two? Because that's what, to us, that's what they hard committed to. They said it multiple times. By phase two, layering will be gone. I, I think they would there. have to, right? Because yeah. Because it, like, it just wouldn't work with world bosses. So, during my stream, I had people saying, like, do you really believe them? Do you really think they're going to hold true to that? And I, I, I think they have to. I think they have to just because of the content of, of phase two, the world bosses. Um, also, that's the world PvP phase. Imagine trying to grind on or PvP phase two and there's layering. Oh, dude, that would be terrible. So I think they have to get rid of it. But also, just to give the classic classic dev team credit, like, I, I feel like they've earned, I feel like they've earned a little bit of respect. Like, I in general, they've made pretty good decisions over the last year. I think. Yeah, I think, um, I think they've yeah. done a good job, so, and they've they've been they've been really yeah. good about interfacing with the community and listening to community yeah. feedback. That's Absolutely. that's probably been the most impressive part of this whole thing. So I've done things I never think they would do. Like, yeah, exactly. Think things that we thought were impossible. So that's exactly mm -hmm. like a year ago. The conversations we were having were, "Please, LFR and achievements don't make it to classic." Right. We've come a long way since then, and I do want to give one specific example. Credit to Stay Safe for suggesting this. This is how open to feedback and advice they were. Um, towards the end of the night, after the event wrapped up, there was something like there was like a little mixer, like a little dinner, post event dinner. Mm -hmm. And it was me, S Van, Stay Safe, and Quissy. And Ian Hazacostas and Omar Gonzalez rolled mm -hmm. by and they sat down with us for a couple of hours and we were just chatting. And we were talking about the layering mechanism. And um, you know, we were talking about it and you know, we're, we were kind of lukewarm to it. We didn't really understand how it works 100%. And stay safe just goes, hey, so um, would it be possible to have it so, you know, when you're on a layer, you're given some kind of priority to be on your guildmates layer? Like there's some internal guildmate layering priority system. And Ian just turns to Omar and he's like, yeah, I, th I think we could do that. Right, Omar? We can do that. And just like, boom, you know, yeah. like th that's the level of, you know, th their willingness to work with the community and, and mm -hmm. take good advice and feedback. And um well, when it comes to specifically to, to the to the layering thing and ending in phase in phase two or whatever, Ian Azacostas himself. Okay, actually, you know, let, let me let me let me reenact exactly what he said. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Uh, what's up? Frick, hold on one second. I gotta fix something. <laughs> Everyone, hold Frick on. No show. The hold yeah. On. Uh, Are you live? Yeah, I'm still live. Give me a second. Okay. They can hear us right now. 
you know I what know. i so i need to i'll do it later uh you know what it is is i am going to log out i'm gonna do that give me a second guys sorry so here's what's happening uh i just muted my desktop audio so you can't hear them uh so here's yeah we're leveling dude we're leveling up here's here's what happened uh that is the sound for buying t-shirts and that's why that's going off uh but i don't have my console open to where it's muted right now uh and i thought it was going to auto mute so that's why that's happening um so yeah let me try and fix that real quick uh just give me one second they can't hear you guys but they can hear me yeah uh so yeah um yeah, okay, good. Uh, log in. Give me one second, guys. I'm sorry about that. That was pretty funny. Uh, classic cast, podcast. Yeah, okay. Scuffed? Yeah, a little bit. It'll be fine. Uh, widgets. Alert box. It's okay, guys. We're going to level plenty tomorrow. You're going to get used to hearing that noise. It'll be fine. Sweet. Okay. Saved. You guys ready? Ready break. Ready. Okay. Sorry. Continue. So uh, would you like to continue to reenact? No, I, I, I don't. Nice. Right, the story, the story's dead. <laughs> story's dead. No. Uh, but what Ian <laughs> said was, basically, he was like, you know, you know, we understand that the community is concerned with uh, layering and the potential for having multiple Kazakhs in phase two. We're going to hard commit that there will not be multiple Kazakhs in phase two. There will not be a uh, layering in phase two. We're hard committed to that. We hear you and blah, blah. You know, he did his whole thing and he didn't say that being said. So that means it, it's, it's working. Okay. It, it, they're not, they're not doing layering in phase two. He like yeah. straight up went out of his way to like, to say we are hard committing, not doing layering in phase two. Mm -hmm. period dude so one thing that also came up when we were talking to them and and you know we've talked about like right click reporting and all this stuff like one thing that i've been pretty like uh, i i've i do not like this is the chat like the the chat systems in retail wow they're in classic right now so in the demo if you were typing if you type like more than three sentences it mutes you and it's just it kills chat interaction yeah. and it's so yeah. bad it's so incredibly bad and i brought this up to ian and yeah yeah it kills it so what happens is uh, in whenever you're playing games, whenever you, for anybody who grew up like in like around our age playing games, you're used to run around, do your thing, type one sentence, go back, type one sentence, go back, type one sentence, go back. Because back then, not everybody was always on voice chat and stuff. Uh, the problem is this is like instilled in a lot of people, just like machine gun typing. And if you machine gun type in retail WoW right now, is it mutes you in trade chat, and that kills that kills the the conversation and stuff that's going on in trade chat, world chat. There are global chat channels that you can join. Uh, but it, but this would like, it would hamper that like pretty bad. And that's really, really annoying. Uh, and, and we brought that up to Ian Hasekosis too. And, uh, he seemed, he, he didn't commit to anything, but he, uh, he, he seemed to respond positively to, to the feedback about that. Whenever, whenever I was talking about how bad, I, I think my exact words were like, it's absolutely AIDS. Please fix this. So, so yeah, I, uh, I really <laughs> hope they do fix it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude, Ian's Ian's a troll, by the way, dude. He was talking about possibly putting in Cthulhu pre-nerf for the first week of Phase Five, just to troll. Yeah, uh, who knows? Who uh, knows? Yeah, like they're like Can there's a lot actually of do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, he's, thinking, also, he's a vanilla gamer. Like, there's something like let's be honest. Anybody who played vanilla WoW at that level, there's something wrong with them. Like, I, I can tell you firsthand, <laughs> <laughs> like, there's something wrong with them. So yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. We asked about like, you know, will you be able to drop Infernals and Goldshire and is that going to be bannable? And he's like, no, do it. Absolutely. And the, the term also, they used was they wanted to keep it as Wild West as possible. I think that's how Omar described yes. it. Yes. They, they also okayed cross-faction inclusion. So mafias are a go. They, they, uh, there is he, there is a said, difference. Yeah, why not? Well, mm -hmm. the thing is, they said is like there is a point in which there is a point in which like it goes from playing the game, let the kids play to griefing. But... It's, I mean, it's just, generally speaking, it's very let the kids play. So, so yeah. True. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's fine. It was, uh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, is there anything else? Krom, if you get in the beta tomorrow, what's the game plan, man? Mm-hmm. 
Uh, for me, I, I have I have so many things I want to test. I wanted to test my like one through ten leveling speed. I just want to I just want to play with my friends. I I just want to play with you guys. Dude, so me badly. too, man. Right. That's it. I, I I don't have any I don't have any other plans except for just like vegging out for like a twenty four hour period, playing until I can't play anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nothing else after that just test things play for 24 hours until i'm good and sweaty so when you so you play an undead rogue and i play a no so when you say play with your friends you know that means us meeting on the road in ashenvale and uh <laughs> we'll, we'll see we'll see what's up dude Man, the wild west i'll be good i'll be good brother. Yeah. it'll be good it'll yeah be good. oh when do keys go I'll, I'll, oh go ahead go ahead Crum. no i was just saying i promise i won't cannibalize you yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. People are saying, uh, people are asking, like, how do we know when we have a key? Or I actually, I don't know. I went under the impression that it's going to be like BFA beta and BFA alpha was, where it just kind of showed up in your account list on the Battle.net launcher. You have Battle.net launcher, and then you go play, and then above that, there's a little drop down menu. And then at some point today, I'm assuming it's going to go up and it's going to be ready for download, and you're ready to go tomorrow. Um, that's what I'm assuming. I, I I would hope that they put the download up tonight instead of tomorrow, but yeah. uh, but yeah, that's I've been cool. spamming it the whole time. Like, yeah, just like while you're online, you're <laughs> if, you see, if, you, if you guys see my face light up blue every couple of minutes, it's because I keep spamming and like shutting it down, and checking it, <laughs> <I'm> just waiting. <laughs> like, did I get it? No. Just just because Nelly has been spamming this the entire time, uh, I'm not sure, man. I don't know that anyone knows. Like, I think probably we're gonna have to have some that are real five heads real big mm-hmm. brains get into the beta and start picking that apart but mm-hmm. i i'm the wrong person to ask i'm not sure uh, what do you guys know about api uh just that that basically they're they're going off the retail client i guess i thought it was 735 yeah. but they're going off the retail client yeah mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, need, you need those data miners and those add-on developers that's not that's not our mm-hmm. expertise yeah, yeah. i've yeah, said it- we're we're all really stupid <laughs> yeah you know. yeah i mean i play red <laughs> paladin so i mean like obviously it's something wrong with me <laughs> No, I, I've seen a few people asking me, where do you get a Make Azeroth Great Again hat? That's on my website. That's shop.sfan.tv. A few people have been asking about Make Azeroth Great Again hats. Uh, but guys, uh, anyway, I think this has been a, an exciting day. I'm very, very excited for the beta. I think we all are. Tomorrow's going to be a big day. We'll all be streaming. It's going to be a great time. Uh, I, I We know for sure that... Uh, like, because we went to the event, we know that 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 myself, Stay Safe, and Tips are, are going to be in the beta. We don't know about Crom yet. Uh, hopefully, Crom gets in the beta soon. So, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Blizzard Crom is bless. watching. Crom bless. <laughs> so, if Blizzard hey. is watching, please. please. Great guy, he's a streamer. Yeah. So make sure to drop a follow for Crom. He's in the chat. Make mm-hmm. sure to follow Tips. Make sure to follow S mm-hmm. If and stay safe if as well. You feel like it. Yeah, definitely stay <laughs> safe. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, so yeah, no, uh, please, you know, go ahead and follow, check out YouTube. We have exclusive content, never before seen classic wild beta footage on our YouTube channels right now. So you should check that out. I'm going to continue to stream. We're going to watch some of that stuff on, uh, on, on my stream. We'll talk about some stuff and we'll keep going tonight. Uh, but other than that, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Very exciting time. It's going to be very good. So thank, thank you guys you so much. Me, guys. Yeah, Crom, yeah. for sure. For sure. Take so, care, everyone. Thanks for watching. It's been a good day. It's been a good day, and the days are going to get better every day from August 27th. Mm-hmm. We freaking did it. We did it. We're here, dude. We freaking did it. <laughs> we did it Thank you guys so much. Uh, we'll see you guys later. <laughs>